What's in the bowl, baby? What, what, what's what's in the bowl? I'm actually yeah. uh, that's actually the the reason uh, I just want to let Care know that, uh, that 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 I got to hop off and on. I'm actually baking a cake. Um, oh, nice! I, I, I told I was told that I was filling in for Duncan tonight, so I, I thought I would I would bake something and then do something else while while the show was going on. You know, that's that's typically what he does, isn't it? I just want to be true to enchant my inner inner Duncan and then. Be annoying. No. Well, no. Hey, that. hey, 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 hey. No. I love the bacon. What do you say? I love that's my no. boy. I, I, lo I love Duncan. And, uh, that's my buddy. You don't say that shit about Duncan. Yeah, no, I, Dun I, I love I love Duncan. I love the bacon. I, I love it. It's all it's always hilarious. I always want to know. Like like even like during the day when I see him on, it's like, I wonder what he's got cooking. You know, is it like a burger? Is it uh, is he heating up the leftovers from the pot roast? It's uh, you know, I'm uh, always cooking too, and yeah, like, oh yeah, but half the time I'm eating while I'm doing the show, right, Kirk? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, hey, listen, man. I you know, what the hell's going on? There we go. All right. Um. Yeah. Listen. Uh. We got a special guest tonight. It's going to be hopping on pretty soon. But uh, oh, look at that, care. Oh yeah, that's the best, isn't it? Isn't that fantastic? That's fantastic. Ah uh, ha ha! That's how we roll, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to get that on the uh, website. Yeah, it's awesome. It tastes so good, I can't even tell you. Thanks, Dwayne. I'm feeling good. Hey, Dwayne. I'm I'm in pain right now, but it's I, it's a pain I can deal with. So I cut all my uh, my opiate medicine, the oxycotton's down by less than half. Okay. So because I just don't like taking any kind of opiates. So I, I don't like taking anything. I, I was in a bad car accident last year, and they, and they gave me a couple of scripts of even just like really strong ibuprofen. And I don't, I don't like taking anything. I don't, I don't. I really just, don't. Just all that, I don't. Chemicals in a pill, you know. Yeah. What, what is that? What is that? What is that stuff doing? I don't know. But they had to do a massive re joint. It wasn't just like a small little joint replacement. They had to replace my whole shoulder. Oh, okay. The bone that goes all the way down to from my bicep bone that goes it goes all the way down to almost my elbow. And then the bones up here, almost to my neck. It's crazy. Oh wow! Yeah, and then the whole joint in here. I mean, it's just crazy. They had to do a huge operation on it. Man. So slide that over here. Are you there, Chris? Yeah. Power might go in and out a little bit. Third world problems. We'll bounce you in and out, man. Well, I'm glad you're on the show. Good to have you. Um, let's get started. In five, four. Quest for the perfect blend. Oh, Law Brothers and Sisters of the Leaf. Oh, oh, I interrupted your intro. You I'm did, sorry. Kevin. Come on, I, man. Listen, this is not your show tonight. I, I, Just back no, off. Nobody was saying anything. Back I, off. I, you know, it's like, do, 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 do I talk? I don't know what's going on. I'm I know new, it's instinct. I know it's instinct. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know what to do with my hands. It's like, it's like <laughs> watching those skits with Ben Carson. Every time he talks, I never knew what he could do with those hands. Like... What's his face uh, from Talladega Nights? Yeah, Ricky I know Bobby. Ricky Bobby. Yeah, um, they just keep going. <laughs> yeah, but welcome everybody uh, to the uh, Stogie Road Diaries. Caravante here. I'm with my man Lars. Um, 
Dunk is not here right now. I may try and wrangle him in. I know Dunk, we'd have two people in slings tonight because Duncan broke his, his 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 elbow. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got Lars with a shoulder replacement. We got healthy Kevin Shahan from Cigar uh, Prop as our about, special. I don't know about yeah, health. I got the I got the neck and shoulder thing going on. Be treated by a chiropractor, not not the modern medicine but someone that knows what they're doing Chir Lars you're you're a healthy guy what do you think of chiropractors if I can interrupt for a second okay Gary. um if I think it's completely <laughs> fake but um what? I, yes what? if they if they stuck to just giving massages it would be good well that, um, that, that that'd be a massage therapist but that yeah but the the way that they do most of these chiropractors it's really a fake science it's not real science it's not really being a doctor um but i will say this i did have a chiropractor growing up that probably saved my life i don't know what the hell he did but he did a bunch of chinese internal arts yeah he was not from china he was american he was like a marine and he was in the in asia for a while and he studied uh different kinds of uh, different internal arts. And uh, so I think he did stuff like with that, but I don't know. It, 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 he really did make me feel better, but I do think that uh, the chiropractor is like a fake science. Okay. Well, there we go. We got shoulder, we got Lars the shoulder replacement. We got Kevin getting fake medicine. Yeah. But Kevin, if I was there, baby, I would give you a massage. Even with my one arm, I'd make yeah. you feel better than the, than the chiropractor. Trust me. I, I would be so awkward. I don't like men touch. I you know men touching me. I just I couldn't relax. I barely tolerate him touching me. I you know? hardly let women massage me except like my girlfriend and a couple yeah. of girls that I know that are really strong. I hate when people massage me. I have shitty weak hands. Yeah, I want that strong hands. No, I want the soft. I want the soft lady hands, even if they're not oh. doing anything. That's just fine with me because I really don't, you know, I don't know. Yeah. You guys, you guys okay? You guys want me to move you to a, do you, do you, do you, do you want me to move you to a different section of the room? <laughs> but my girlfriend does grappling, so she's like really got strong hands, strong grip. You know, she does the MMA stuff. She's yeah. Good. So the uh, grappling obviously makes for a good massage therapist. Yeah. Kevin, you're going to see a chiropractor. We're going to get deeper into that. But I did want to introduce Chris. Weber, what's going on, my man? Not much. Hope everybody's not jinxing me with your varying <laughs> yeah. degrees of healthiness. It is varying degrees, oh. um, and, but we're going to work through this. So uh, I'm really happy, excited, and proud to have you on, Chris. Um, I made the announcement uh, two weeks ago that the Stogie Road Cigar is partnering with you in the factory in Nicaragua. I'm going to make sure I say that properly. Hey, are you going to say the factory name really cool? Like, uh, 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 like Duncan does he? Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't have the ability to, to make it sound so smooth. Oh. Chris, can you, how, how, how Chris, do you make it sound fancy. smooth? Say if you're asking me if I can roll R's, I'm not going to embarrass myself. Come on, baby. <laughs> do a little roll. Tobacco layer on the web. Yeah. <laughs> and Nick, so I, yeah. and I'm like, I, I, I do it. It just sounds terrible. But, um, but man, I'm excited to have you on tonight and excited that uh, Kevin was able to join us. And uh, maybe we can find Duncan somewhere in the mist if he's not making a pot, a pot roast. Um, but uh, I know he's been recovering from a bad arm injury. But, um, you know, it's funny as Chris and I connected, uh, what was it, the turn of the new year, wasn't it? Or at the end of the last year? On there close, yeah. Yeah. And, and we connected and um, through, through a mutual friend and uh started talking and really hit it off um we found out that we had a lot of similarities we have a lot of similar friends um similar stomping grounds especially delaware whenever you have a connection yeah. with someone in delaware that's a sign <laughs> and you can actually understand a true sandwich shop of casapulas or capriates then you're like yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so um but but really, the, the determining factor was. Uh, uh, hey, Anthony, how are you? Did my dad hop on? Big Tony. But, yeah, Big Tony. There he is, the man, the myth, right there. Um, so Karen's on. What's going on? See, Ooh, Karen's a massage, massage therapist. therapist. Nice, love it. But uh, I mean, one of the things was after we had that great conversation and, and connection, really, was talking about tobacco, and I was really impressed with. Uh, 
with uh, Chris's knowledge of tobacco and also the conversation and the vision of what I wanted to do with Stogie Road Cigars and where I wanted to go with the brand with the blends and how we could take the current blends and, and really take them to the next level. So, uh, uh, Kevin, I hear, look at you. you I, I, I don't, you're, you're, you this, you've been silent for so long. I don't know what to do with myself. I really don't. <laughs> I, 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 I was waiting you to finish your introduction. Uh, you know, I like that good. angle. Good, Kevin. Oh, thank you. I, I can, I can switch back and forth. No, I like that. That's yeah. great. Angle. Uh, it's okay, closer cool. to your face, Kevin. All right. Well, then, I mean, higher practice using y y face. Y y yes, and but, he has but, a great beard. But, beard but my spot, but my sponsors sometimes like seeing all of their signage that they provide. So we'll we'll come back to here. Do I get a certain percentage uh, of that? Since you're on the yeah, uh, no. Um, uh, Chris, uh, uh, first of all, how old are you? You look young to be having all these years in the cigar industry. How how old are you? If I can ask. Uh, of course, you can ask. I am thirty seven. 37. I, I feel like I've done fucking nothing with my life when I hear that. When I feel like someone's like younger than me and they like they own a factory. I mean, you can be a factory making anything. And it's just like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? You know, this guy owns a goddamn factory and he's 37 years old. And uh, so I appreciate that. But um, uh, and then you <laughs> and then and where you had you, mentioned your power going out. Where are you broadcasting from tonight? Oh, I'm at my house in San Juan del Sur in Nicaragua. Oh, okay. So, good thing you said Nicaragua. I'm like, that could have been like any, I figure in Cal California, that sounds like a weird Kevin's California geographically name. challenged. I like, don't know where things are at. Um, the I man really thought yeah. that Nicaragua or Honduras or Nicaragua was by New Zealand. No, I think I was being <laughs> facetious when I Wait said that. You mean it's not? <laughs> yeah, you know, but I don't know where a lot of things are. I just recently found out like England was an island. I don't know. Um, it's That's just, sad. It, it, yeah, I don't. I don't know. You know, even after watching all those World War, and ne never, never clicked. Never clicked. I don't. I'm not good with maps. Um, uh, hey, so, hey, Kevin, you like my new shirt tonight? I, I, I love I, that shirt. I, I do. Lars, I know you would. This is the new. Why? This is the new Yveta from Yveta Bear Clothing, and um, I, I, I I'm love that. The first person to actually haven't wear it. I'm not the first who's received it, but um, this is. Uh, this has just been released. Uh, it's nice. I'm not allowed. I'm Jessica and does not allow me to own light colored stuff. Um, I just, I mess it up instantly. I All mean, right, let's not just... get racist now. Yeah. 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 So uh, any, anything lightly colored, I don't do, I don't do well. Hey, Duncan. Uh, How hey, are you Duncan. You brought me in on the comment racist. What the yeah. hell kind of crap yes. is this? Yes. Honey, we know when honey, to bring how's you your in, hand? Duncan. How's your hand? Dude, it's fine. How are you doing, brother? I'm in pain. Yeah, a little pain never hurt anybody. Come on, a little pain never hurt anybody. What's That's going funny. on, guys? What's going on, Chris? How you doing, Kevin? What's happening? I know. I love the pink, Jennifer. It's so awesome. So Dun we, we brought Duncan on literally just to say the name of the factory. That's it. That's all. Okay, so uh, the Spanish lesson for tonight is uh, Tabacalera Nueva Nica. Thank you, Duncan. Um, we got oh my god that was hilarious that, hurt, that was hilarious we'll, we'll, we'll let you go check on your roast uh, <laughs> please, please please come back uh that's uh, fantastic oh dude dude man uh so so yeah, chris what, um um you're you're you're, you're a, holy shit man yes Shut up, Duncan. Um, it's uh, <laughs> I'm talking now. No, <laughs> Listen, I, I, I don't. I don't get a chance to oh, chat no, with my boy the Duncan. In, in the gay pink shirt, talk for a while. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I don't get a chance to chat with Duncan. Yeah, man, his shirt's need, stylish, man. I chat more, more often. I love that. Kevin, look at this. He's wearing like this gay pink. What is that? Yeah. It's it's not it's not gay. It's not gay pink. It's, Listen, yeah. it is. I mean, it, 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 yeah, so, is. Yes, First of all, that is not gay pink. Okay, and I'm sorry. Second, coral. Second of all, it's a delicate coral okay. pink. How's it, that? It is a second of all, yeah. second of all, I saw one of the manliest guys wearing that shirt just recently. Yeah, and it's and called RuPaul. No, it was a little Nas X. All right, listen. Remember one thing. I can mute all you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Duncan, stop gay bashing me. Oh, yeah. And my oh, shirt. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> 
I love Lars. It. Thank uh, you for if the. You th send me that shirt. I promise you, I will wear it on one of the shows. Lars, thank you for compliment me complimenting my shirt through someone else it. by complimenting yeah. someone else. <laughs> Brings out the color of your eyes, Kevin. Uh, maybe Lil Nas X is not just somebody; he's amazing. Kevin, back to you. And I know none of you guys know who he is. <laughs> I, 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 know, I know, I know who he, I know who he is. Funny. Everybody, everybody, if you don't know who Lil Nas X is, come on now. You get that? You get the hell out of here, Old Town Road. I love that song. Yeah, yeah man, that's so, what I'm talking about right there. Okay, I never listen to that song. That song isn't even anything. It's that it Montero. Awesome. That's the best song. Oh hey, my god! Are we I'm here to talk about cigars or what? What's going on here? Yeah. Uh, we're the, talking Chris about giving a lap dance to the devil. Yeah. We're talking about giving a lap. Now you see, you see, we actually had some some sort of flow here, Duncan. You just come in like a. What? Damn. He came in like a wrecking ball. There you go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta wreck the balls. I gotta wreck the balls. Easy now. <laughs> Easy. My dad's watching. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Paul. Paul, I love you, Anthony. Yeah, I'll sell. I'll, I'll cut him loose. Don't yeah, I know Daryl, right? Daryl hops on. He's like, um, hi, Chris. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Daryl. Yeah. I, I got to start wrangling here. It's like herding cats some days. <laughs> it really is. So, so Kevin, well, Kevin, well, Kevin, well, you were in it. Well, Kevin, you were in the middle of asking a question. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I, I want to go before we hear the I'd like to eventually hear the story of how, you know, Chris got into cigars, got into, you know, owning a factory. Um, but uh, um, he's doing my like first a question. Yeah, I, I, I want to know what what was because I couldn't find any any history on it because uh, uh, the website was down as well. What is Cars, Cigars, and Bars? What what uh, is that? So so you originally had started that. What was that? I didn't actually start that. Oh, okay. Uh, the brief version of the answer to that question, which is a years long answer, uh, that was started by somebody else, uh, a guy I used to work with, and he wanted to. Um, develop a magazine is where that all started. And from magazine, we came into cigar production and here we are 10 years later, this June. Um, but that wasn't my creation. I mean, the concept was nice. It's just, it definitely wouldn't work now with COVID. Basically, uh, it was, he was trying to get partnerships within this magazine, but also on a local level where you could get different bars to tag along bringing car shows to the bars and obviously bringing cigars in the parking lot on the outside as well. Um, and from that, it turned into like, well, where are we going to get cigars from? Um, you know, plethora of places you can get from, let alone meet retailers. And then uh, I just kind of had the idea of, well, why don't we make cigars? I, I didn't have any idea of how easy or difficult that would be at the time. And then bam, here we are. Now, what, what you said at the time, what time was that? 2011. Okay. So definitely a lot harder. Well, actually, that started in 2010, and then yeah. cigars came to birth in late 2010, early 2011. So it's still that... a little harder then than it is now. You know, like I said, now, I mean, it's really easy to walk into, you know, um, um, a, a factory or, or get your own cigars made. You know, like I said, you know, reach out on social media you know, you can meet blenders and factory owners and get those conversations exactly. started pretty quickly. Back then, probably a little, a little harder, I imagine. Uh, at the time, uh, I'd like to say yes, but hindsight's always twenty twenty. Yeah. So it may have been just as convenient now. I mean, we got these, so we can contact whomever on a moment's notice. Uh, and at the time, we started with one factory. We moved along and now now we've uh, originated our own i mean you give me a lot of props i appreciate that it, it's look even with my shitty spanish it's not that hard um <laughs> just have to <laughs> dedicate yourself to uh <laughs> i don't mean the I, I may have came off dickish i didn't mean that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know you knew me so well <laughs> But uh, oh, it was. Uh, you're in a safe you know, space. You're in a safe place. It's okay. Yeah. Go. 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 But uh, yeah, it, um, it came to is, is <laughs> a few years ago, we just decided to just plow ahead. I mean, trying to be as vertically integrated as we can. Um, 
we're we're looking into the concept of actually I <laughs> I have land and we're trying to try and experiment with growing tobacco too. But a green thumb, I do not have. I could kill a cactus with very little effort, yeah, or a lot of effort. And uh, so, you know, we're just looking for the right people to help us with that horticulture is down here. And we have a few people in mind and we'll get started with that, too. But I mean, controlling cost in an ultra competitive market. I mean, I would say within the past 10 years, the market got a lot more competitive. There's a lot oh, of amazing oh, brands yeah, that come yeah. out here. And it's like price. How do you control price when somebody else is charging you? It's like uh, another middleman. So eliminate the middleman by producing it yourself. And then it's still competitive still ultra competitive so yeah um, there's a lot of great companies out there that I, I won't say we're competing against we're just within their company mm -hmm. yeah now would you was that 2010 is that when you really started and i know we, we we've talked a lot obviously but we haven't really talked about when you first started smoking cigars and what got you into cigars actually it was my high school roommate i went to a boarding school in malvern and um right next to malvern prep that was our arch rivals. And um, from there, uh, there's a kid named Rob Caden, who I've been trying to track down ever since. But, you know, he went off to China, met a woman over there, teaches English over there. I think he came back. Uh, but he really, really got me into it. Um, our church would get together a lot. And all the guys, with the exception of my father, would they get around and drink whiskey and, and bourbon and beer and smoke cigars. And it kind of started there. And then once I got into high school and met Rob, Rob had been smoking cigars <laughs> from a very young age. Um, and uh, he brought me a, a box of Cubans that he smuggled across the border from Toronto. And uh, I mean, at least I think they're Cubans. Who knows? There's a big Cuban market out there. And uh, from there, like, I joined the golf team. And I joined the golf team because it was the only sport that was off campus where I could be away from the prying eyes of proctors and dorm parents because <laughs> we're on the course. And that was that. That's where I started. All the way back then. Yeah. <laughs> My father loves that now. He's not yeah. going to get in that much trouble. <laughs> I can't. Well, Lars, you were rolling cigars back in those days, huh? When you yeah, were younger? I was, I was 15 when I started rolling cigars. I'm 57 now. So. 42 years ago. At fifteen, I was only smoking, so you got that on me. Now, now, have you have you given your hand at rolling, or can you can you roll a cigar? Um, from years of playing hockey and lacrosse, like my hands are all busted up. I'm trying, I'm trying to get better. I'm not even what you would categorize as good, so <laughs> you know. But I've tried. No, just trying to achieve achieve that level one status, you know, let alone exactly. le, le, a level nine roller. <laughs> See, and, and Lars, you're 57, but you do have a, a weak old shoulder. Yeah, that's true. Yes. So you're you're. It's you're, not it's, even a week old. It'll it'll balance out. You're you're actually going back in age when you think about it, with the mm. with the with the replacement parts of your body. I can't wait till this is better and I can actually start using it again. I'm just going to be so happy. And Duncan, any word on your on your arm? How, I mean, so, we, I, I got to check up on everybody here to make sure everybody's injuries, everybody's comfortable. Like, everybody's, you, got like two injured, you got like two injured old farts over here. Jesus. I do, I, man. I, I don't mean it in a bad way, man. But uh, no, the, uh, they did a CT scan yesterday. Uh, it is a fractured. Uh, it's a fracture on the radial bone uh, right down here. So... Uh, the specialist is meeting with me on the 20th. They are possibly going to add a, an extra four more weeks on the on the best case of just no movement, let it heal naturally. Uh, worst case scenario, if they got to go in and do like a little invasive surgery, or whatever, a little something, a little metal rod or some crap, then we're looking at about three months then, dude. And I'm not looking forward to that. Um, I, I'm feeling a lot better with the arm after three weeks in this thing. Uh, I take it off every now and then. You know, a little mobility is a lot better, but I'm hoping for some good news in a, in about another week and a half. So, God willing. See, I I, I want a, like a metal rod or something inside me. So years ago, my, <laughs> my 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 buddy who's a machinist machined me a little tiny Chevy bow tie oh at, a, at a at a surgical grade titanium, and nice. I have it. So in case I ever get in an accident and like they got to, I'm like, hey, can you put this inside me? 
like Dude, just so because I, because, I, because I because I'm a I'm a Chevy guy and I want to have like an X-ray and like look at that inside. I'm Chevy all the way to the core, baby. You know, yeah, like I'm, yeah, I'm like that. redneck Chevy as hell. Yeah, wow, I'm ready you know, to bounce you now. Not Chevy. <laughs> I love Chevy, brother. Shoot, I mean, we got two small cars. They're very economical. They're they're amazing. Shoot, I love them. And don't Chevy. make fun, Kerry. Don't make fun. It's what, 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 do you, what, what do you what do you got? What kind of cars you got? He's got a PT uh, Cruiser. We, got, uh, we're, we 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 are like small uh, uh, good cars. We got a little Chevy Aveo. Fantastic for long trips. Great on gas. Well, first of all, uh, no, it's I not fantastic it. for long trips. A, a Tahoe is fantastic for long well, trips. Well, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, for like, you yeah. Know, if you want to like save time and money and stuff like that, not time, you know, not stop anywhere. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, if, if you want to save time and be uncomfortable for your entire road trip, a, a yeah, Chevy, I mean, the Chevy hey, Aveo is the car of choice. That car for me, I've taken it to New York. I've taken it to Miami. It's fit. for me personally. Throw my bags in the back. It's a rolling cigar thing. I got my cigars, dude. Right. To me, it is the best little car I've ever had. 38 miles to the gallon. Fantastic, yeah. dude. That's I mean, awesome. I, mean, I'm, hey, I love a big car. 38 dude. miles per gallon. 30, yeah, who cares? Awesome. Like I said, I, I want, yeah. They're a Duncan Coast. I salon. love that. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. no, no. I, I want, I want some, I, I want like a big, Four wheel drive diesel right getting six miles for the gallon, blowing black smoke and <laughs> chain smoking cigars, eating a steak while I'm driving it. And <clears> just uh, so, right, what's so the other? What, all right, big man, what are you driving right now? Uh, I drive a, uh, um, um, a GMC Acadia. Oh, God, Jesus, you're a woman. Go suck it. Don't be, don't be critiquing me. Never you're heard of Acadia. I can drive a woman's car. I, I, can fit, I can fit your car in the back of my car. <laughs> Man, get I I love my little beater. I love it, dude. It's that, fantastic. That, that's that's fine. That's all that matters. That's all that matters that well, you that you like it. It's interesting that you guys are are really discussing whose car is the best car. And I, I Duncan never gave us answer to what he drives, and you said Acadia, which I don't even know what the hell that is. I drive an Avail. It's Chevy. That's a, Avail. Oh, right. okay. The Acadia is a GMC version of the Traverse. So and, it, it, again. It, it, it's knowing. right. It's, it's underneath the Tahoe. Okay, it's right underneath the Tahoe. Um, Daryl Iverson does have a question. It, it, I'm, I'm going to try and knife right through this car conversation uh, with my man Big D, Daryl Iverson in Anderson, South Carolina. Chris, what's been the most challenging aspect of bringing a premium cigar factory online? Well, for me, I've had the benefit of working with some stellar factories in the past, so I got to pick up on a lot of things. Um, I had a, uh, a mentor who owns Takasa Cigar Factory down here, Carlos Sanchez, and he taught me um, a lot. And of course, I worked with, um, uh, we used to have production over at James's factory at Oveja Negra. So for me, I had the benefit of uh, knowledge and in Carlos's case, um, advice, a lot of advice, because Carlos has been in business 20, 30 years, I think, at this point. Um, so the language barrier was a big thing, to be honest with you. Um, something that I find frustr that I found to be most frustrating is you down here, you really have to get used to the concept of Nicaraguan time and <laughs> Nicaragua's interpretation of what I'm saying. So let's just say that I even said something and, and, and my factory manager, Enoch, he, he speaks perfect English. Still, things can get lost in translation because how we as Americans say things. Yeah. So for instance, let's just say I'm talking about blending and I'm saying that I want something strong. They understand full body. They get that as a concept for the, what I found. But if I'm trying to be specific on flavors I'm trying to get, sometimes that gets lost. The other part is getting used to the fact because I like to keep and maintain the same employees as much as I possibly can. And there's a lot of turnover, especially in production. We don't specifically have that issue. I'm sure in time we will. It's getting used to that. The other part is getting like your blends down, making sure that they're documented in some capacity that if there's turnover, um, that it can be, um, well, retranslated back to whoever's taking over that position. Um, Getting used to doing business down here was a little bit challenging at first because coming from America, you're, you're used to like, you know, if I say I, I, if, if my cable's out, I'm used to being able to call up Comcast and bam, they're there. 
you know, <laughs> if our internet goes down, Claro is the company down here. If that goes down, we're just getting it installed. Like I'm used to waiting all day for Comcast to show up. I'm not used to waiting like a week for whenever it feels like Claro is willing to get up and come over and do stuff like that. So once you get that under your belt, and I've ha- I had the um, I've lived down here for quite some time, on and off. Uh, so I had that benefit, but the biggest thing is getting your stuff to market. So it's not so much getting the factory off the brand off the ground; it's getting the blend <laughs> that you're producing on the market, letting people know, "Hey, this is what we have. Here it is." So it's like it's a challenging aspect that you have to uh, balance that between here and well, America, Europe, Asia for us and stuff like that. Um, but finding good people. There's not a shortage in Esteli. Um And then finding people that can manage those people, that's the biggest challenge. And we were just blessed to almost fall ass backwards uh, into people that knew people or I knew people. So from our factory management to our production management to our warehouse management, uh, I even hired somebody to oversee the aging room because you also have to balance <laughs> Humidity with temperature, especially in the rainy season down here, that um, can throw some people for a loop if you're not prepared for that. Uh, at the end of the year in the rainy season, it adds humidity. So sometimes you ha- it adds a lot of humidity. Um, balancing that out, um, it's just learning about all the different environmental factors and cultural factors. And once you get that under your belt, it's actually, I, I found it to be easy as long as you're um, capable of just dealing with people from different diverse cultures. And from coming from a boarding school where I had classmates from Saudi Arabia, Arabia, Japan, Lebanon, Brazil, Spain, France, England, you know, and uh, the cultural aspects that I got exposed to through my parents growing up, it was easier to understand cultural differences. It, it still gets frustrating from time to time, but, you know, you work through it. And uh, diligence is, due diligence is key, but perseverance is enough. Mm-hmm. It's not letting the things that get you frustrated get you to the point where you're like, all right, stop, start again tomorrow. It's just being able to go like, all right, cool. Thought that was going to happen. It didn't. What can we do now type of a deal? So um, that that was the hardest part for me. But once I got used to it, it's smooth sailing from there on out. Now, now do you have a, um, a, a counterpart? Because I, I, I interviewed James a couple weeks ago. And, and I know him and his wife are, are down there, you know, um, 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 as well, which definitely during COVID, it must have been just a, a godsend for you to be able to stay working at the factory. Um, do you have counterparts here in the U.S.? Um, as in, um, like, uh, um, I don't, and I, I'm not sure how your business is, is structured. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you have, you know, presidents or if you have brokers or who, you know, you have someone here in the U.S. that's able to distribute the product and run the u.s side while you're down south uh yes and that was one of the problems i found because this isn't our first iteration of the factory um i had one years ago and trusted the wrong person and got robbed for everything that i had down here um and it, it the problem was balancing here to there and i tried to carry too much on my shoulders and just the reality is i, I can't be in three places or two places at once so um we hired uh jason lois last year uh we uh he's a sales rep and uh he's acting as a, a chief executive officer officer right now i have my partner who lives in my my business partner who lives uh in new jersey and my brother, well, he's not my brother, but he's the closest thing I can have to a brother uh, who lives down the, the road in Dover, or actually Smyrna, to be uh, to be uh, completely accurate, uh, Delaware. Yeah, don't, don't mix up Dover and Smyrna. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, so we're moving our warehousing into Philadelphia to a, a customs-bonded facility up there. So having them there to oversee, okay, cool, here's our orders, let's go pack it, ship it, get it out, work on the next. Um, and uh, uh, Jason, who's able to oversee the U.S., uh, we'll say for the lack of a better term, guidance at this point, because we're an established brand, but we've been off the market uh, in, a, in a steady capacity for a couple years during a rebuilding phase. Uh, Jason helped bring us out of that. There are some moves we're going to be making with key uh, hires, 
that we already have uh, contractual, uh, not a contract in place, but agreements on contractual terms, at least, um, that will be happening this year that will help expand. As far as sales go, we work with brokers, and obviously Jason's in-house for the territory he's managing right now, which is rather large. He's based out of Louisville, uh, Kentucky, but he's covering Western PA, Ohio, West Virginia, Indiana, um, and everywhere in between, which I think they all connect, so there's nothing in between. But um, <laughs> the, um, that, that's how we're working right now, but we're gonna be building through brokers. Over in Europe, I have a counterpart over there that has helped introduce us steadily to, to the European market over the past few years. Um, a few contacts in Asia that we've been steadily uh, sending and producing for over the past few years. So um, it just took time to build up those those relationships. I always tell everybody when they say like, well, oh, what's your customer base like? I don't look at it as customers. It's more of like a relationship management thing. So it's just a business relationship or in some case uh, friends, but being able to have people that you can trust on two different continents, or in our case, three to four continents, that's a big part. And that, that takes a lot of weight off the shoulders of any one person or any organization. So, or, kind of or, right or, or, or yeah, or, or it puts that much more weight on. I mean, you know, it's not, now you're, you know, not, not just responsible for you. I mean, you're down there blending and you've got to provide for this team, you got to provide for an army to get, right. you know, to get, <laughs> to get that, the logistics, you know, you're just, you're the starting, you're the starting point, and then it's got to get out. So that for me, that, that, would, that would definitely be be nerve wracking. Um, if I could ask Lars a question, because it's a question I don't think I've heard Care ask, or maybe maybe um, uh, um, I've missed it. How have you done overseas on the last forty years? Are you are you real big overseas? Or well, for for the longest time in the beginning, it was more overseas than it was in the United States. Okay. We we're, doing, we we're doing more in Eastern Europe, Russia, Africa than we were doing it here in the U.S. Okay. And we actually did a, a little good work in Hong Kong for a while. Whatever. Yeah. Now, I, I, Lars, in your in your many years uh, of doing this, uh, uh, listening to, to Chris kind of talk through. All of the experiences, the trust, the uh, can't play in three places in one, you know, one time. Uh, what what have you learned over the years and uh, of, of producing um, fantastic cigars and and really um, needing to, to to implement some of these uh, some of these things? I mean, what what's the toughest thing from from your perspective? Probably staff, just making sure you take care of your people, making sure you got good uh, crew around you and you just take care of them. So, so that be your, your one, one big piece of advice to Chris and then even care, you know, starting theirs is just take care of your, take care of your staff, well, take, take care, care of, your of staff. each other, make sure yeah. the top people that are running your stuff are really well-trained and that they're really on point. And I think that also, I mean, that holds true in, in any environment. Duncan, you've been, uh, you have your shop, you've, you've worked in, in, in a couple of different cigar shops, and I'm sure it probably rings true at, at that level as well as a tobacconist. I always say to uh, a lot of folks, it's, uh, it, it really is a good team inside of the shop as well. You know, you may have uh, a shop owner who may not know the ins and outs of the actual humidor. He just be, maybe he's a great businessman, but he doesn't, do cigars. Uh, I, I always say, get yourself somebody in that humidor that understands cigars, that can talk to people, can interact with them, you know, build a team around that. And that is part of the great success story of most of the best cigar shops out there. You know, the ones that are like, you know, two, three, four, five, they're chains. Uh, you never see one guy handling at all. It's always uh, around a great team of people. Um, you know, to that effect, uh, you got a place like Tobacology. I mean, you look at them; they're all certified tobacconists. They're they're like a big family. Yeah, you got guys it's like uh, Old Virginia. I mean, uh, Davidos, uh, da Davidos uh, cigars up there also. Yeah. Uh, you got um, Tinderbox down here. I mean, uh, you got you know you got the main guys, but immediately behind them, you got these amazing teams of buyers and and, and staff that works one hundred percent behind them. 
it is about that. I mean, trying to do this one man, I've actually, you know, faced the perils of that. Uh, I tell everybody, you know, when you try to do it all uh, yourself, you, you, you're going to trip and fall a lot of times. It's too much weight sometimes. It definitely is. And you got to take care of your people. You got to take care of each other. And uh, um, more, more importantly, you know, um, you got to have that, uh, that, that trust and loyalty. I mean, it's, I mean, even, even in being in, in the medical industry for as many years as I have been, it, it always boils down to, uh, you know, that, that loyalty and trust. And um, I think that's kind of uh, appropriate everywhere. So uh, someone's asking, Chris, what are you drinking? Dwayne wants to know. And what are you, and what, and what are you smoking? Drinking and smoking. Smoking your stuff. So I figured that. That's like a bottle of Florida Gagne. Is that Florida Gagne? That is. Oh, man. I love that stuff. And Fiddick 12. Can't go wrong with that, man. Either or. This is the best stuff we can get down here. I got a friend flying down from Hawaii in May, and I told him he's got to stop at Duty Free and stock me up. Just finding good liquor down here is impossible. (laughs) <laughs> and which one are you smoking tonight if, if i may be so padded question ask <laughs> of course if you're allowed to it's your show uh i got all your stuff here so um right now i'm smoking with the uh, candela connecticut uh next up is the big tony um yes, the green girl. and uh i'm very very proud of that one <laughs> yeah uh, it is a very very happy that you're happy i mean the biggest thing with running a factory it's not just it, it's taking your the, the aspect i didn't touch on is it's what i like might not be what's the best thing for the market so you're running this for me at least because i'm neurotic with used to being in control of everything it's just because i like it doesn't mean it's the best thing that we should be producing so it's being able to step back take my palette out of it and surrounding yourself, like Lars said, with people that you trust to give you valid opinions. I mean, 10 years in business, I'm friendly with a lot of retailers from Dave Pushkabitz out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to uh, my boys out in Hawaii, the 808 crew, uh, from Kalani, Bernie, Dave on down the Keen. So all have diverse palettes. So I'm at least blessed to have people I can trust to make sure that, hey, like, what do you think of this? Let me ship you out like a bundle of 20 and you guys all give me your honest assessment if i you know and it gives you a pretty good idea based on their diverse customer base which are all differing that uh that you're putting out something that the consumers want that they'll like that they'll enjoy and not just enjoy one time and hopefully come back more times the goal for any brand is to get into somebody's weekly rotation Mm -hmm. um you know and doing that as much as possible so um and you mentioned James, Kevin. I mean, I got a lot of respect for for uh, uh, for James. I'm, I'm a customer to this day. Uh, everything coming out of Oveja Negra, I love. His, his palette's very similar to mine. I like that really strong, full body in your face. I think Sam Lucia once called him the king of broadleaf. Um, I think that's an applicable statement. Uh, and what James does, and, and Angela both, uh, phenomenal cigars. I mean, I love them. So, you know, it's it, it's being able to, uh, and, and some of the stuff when we were working with them <clears throat> wasn't quite in their wheelhouse. I mean, I'm not sure if they've ever done barber poles before we went there, and I'm not sure if they ever did a triple wrap barber pole. Um, I, I'm very happy with what they did with, with it while they had it. Uh, and when we moved on, um, you know, I try to learn from as many people as I can along the way. I'm just blessed to have worked with a few um icons along the way james being one of them carlos you know uh with his own plethora of knowledge it's being able to pull all that stuff together and 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 understand a lesson when you're being taught it too often i think we just blow past somebody telling us something worth listening to um i very i've tried very much to just slow myself down as a naturally quick person and and listen when they were talking so um, i'm very grateful to the experiences i've had uh, with James and Carlos and everyone else. So. Now, now you, you had brought up Barber Pole, and then s- since we're here with Care Viajante, the Barber Pole, self-proclaimed, by the way. Easy Barber, there, Barber, slick. Barber, <laughs> Barber Pole <laughs> King. Um, I mean, yeah, everybody just call themselves a king, you know, so as yet to, you know. 
But, uh, Kev, I had to add more to the king. I just didn't <laughs> want to go by king. There's too many people saying, what's up, king? What's up, king? I'm like, you know what? I got to have something in front of it. Fat. No, that doesn't work. Uh, yeah. Hair, no. Barber pole. Yeah, I think that goes well with it. That's it. The barber pole king <laughs> esquire. You need to throw esquire. At the end. Nobody's using esquire. Hey, listen, it. Lars Teton is the world champion of art. So, yes. I mean... That's, that's it. <laughs> how, do you, how do you like that one? I mean, I, come I, on, man. I, I didn't. I, 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 at least I didn't put world champion Barbara Polk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where, where did where did your life? Have you always been a Barbara Polk guy, Chris? I mean, is that? I mean, right from the beginning, have you been, or did you? Where did your love of the barber pole come up come from? You know, I got to credit Carlos with that. If I'm being completely honest, um, we had a factory we worked with in the beginning where. I would say the precursor to our three blends was uh, a cigar called the Tri, and it was you know if you're looking at the cigar, the first part, the first third was Connecticut, second third Habano, um, third third was Maduro, and um, uh, when I talked to Carlos about I wanting to do something different with it, uh, I'm going to be honest, like he came up with the barber pole idea. And then the Vitola that we have, uh, where it's uh, two thirds box press and the last third uh, cap is a Cardona cap, um, was a collaboration between both of us. But uh, I liked the way it smoked. Um, there's a, a couple different ways that I've seen barber poles rolled. Some people roll one solid leaf and then just add an accent leaf around the way. What we do is we cut the leaf in the prep area, or excuse me, on the production table. Uh, our rollers will actually incorporate the entirety of the leaf or it's cut specific to be rolled with like what I consider to be the proper way, but what's proper to me might not be proper to everybody else. But what I've noticed just in the differences in the way well, that they're rolled that, is I the flavor. You, you got it right. That is really the proper way. Uh, Putting an accent thing on it. It's not on really that. a barber pole. No. Yeah. And and I, Dun not, Duncan and I talked well, about well, it a while ago. Fake barber Chris, pole. Chris, <laughs> you got to cut it. You got to do the, the leaves. Yeah. And Chris, yes, that was something right, that, Chris, Chris. when Duncan and I talked oh, about barber poles, I mean, many, many, before I even came out with a cigar, you know, we talked about barber poles and it was, you know, the discussion on how they're made and, and what is a barber pole and what is basically a, a Maduro or a can or a, a, a Connecticut with, you know, a, a strip around it, you know, uh, but um, Usually and when the strippers are on pole, that's not something I'm going to smoke. <laughs> Thank you for taking and running with that, Lars. Uh, but what I like about it is the aesthetics. And if it's rolled properly, like Lars said, and thank you very much. I appreciate that from somebody of your stature. Um, no, you're all, that's awesome, baby. Um, is uh, it, just the way it smokes. Something I've noticed, especially when I when we first started with three blends, like depending on, because ours is a Pennsylvania Broadleaf, uh, an Ecuadorian Habano, and an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. And depending on how uh, the smoker's palate is, like I've had people that have actually said that they've noticed how it kind of changes and jumps back and forth as you're progressing through um, the cigar. And I've heard some people say that they can't taste that at all, but I think the, that component is good. But if you blend it right and you, and you uh, construct it right, a barber pole can be a very, it's more than just aesthetically pleasing. It's pleasing to the palate. You can get yeah. the different flavors of all the wrappers that are being used on there if you're rolling it properly. Um, I pride our, 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 our production team. I mean, I'm very, very thankful for the people that we have from from Judy to Carolina to Felipe. Um, they know what they're doing. Uh, our production team and our blender, our, our production manager and blenders know what they were doing when we were, when we were making the blends for, for care. Kerr, Carrie, I don't know what you want me to call you. Kerr, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, you call me anything. But um, I'm self. I'm yeah. not self-proclaimed Kerr, by the oh, way, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> okay, make sure. But uh, yeah, and when we were doing that, like three blends put us on the map, and we, we've uh, as uh, somebody I've come to call a mentor, Bernard uh, Bernie Luong, out in Hawaii, has told me is like if you are lucky enough to have a cigar that you create that you can build your company around. Um, then you've hit the nail on the head, and you and and you've solidified your 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 footprint. We did that with three blends, and um, we by far th sell that more than anything else. So when um, Joe put us together, um, I was intrigued. I love barber poles because I I know that they can be something more than just aesthetically pleasing. If you blend it right and you construct it right, 
it can be an amazing smoking experience. Now, now when Care came to you with, because Care was the first person to ever do a, a Connecticut Candela barber pole, um, was that was that challenging for you? Well, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but in some cases, my cockiness gets me into a lot of trouble. In some cases, I'm wrong. Um, I saw it as a challenge. Trouble? No. I'm confident in the team that we have. So it wasn't so much just a collaboration between uh, Kara and myself. It's Nuevo Nika, myself, as the owner, and, and Kara at, as well. Um, I knew that we can come up with something that was amazing. I was just wondering if, because when he told me what his initial blends were, what my goal was, as I told him from the beginning, is I'm, I'm going to try my best to recreate what you currently have. That was my next question. That was my next question. Were you guys trying to recreate? Okay. And then ish. I gave him two different ish. other yeah, options. Yeah, yeah. yeah, ish. So, I mean, he used a lot of Honduran tobacco that, for me personally, we just don't use. It's not impossible to get, but in some cases, it's difficult with some of the tobacco that he was using. Um, and then, so we got almost spot on where he was, but I also promised him that I would give him two different variations on it in something that may or may not be a little bit more aggressive, uh, a little bit more medium. And there was selection in the process because, um, um, you know, I'm a full body guy. Uh, when I first started, my first, the first cigars I bought were the Cohiba Cristals in the glass tubes. <laughs> I'm not even sure if they make anymore. And uh, I never thought I'd be a Maduro guy because I felt, fell dead on Habano. Loved Habano and every, every aspect of the leaf. The more I smoked Maduros from all the different variants or varietals of Maduro, Maduro is where I fell. So um, I was confident that not just in the Connecticut Candela blends, where I, to be truthfully honest, where I saw the most challenge was his Maduro Maduro, because I wanted to be able to have the Maduros be complementary to one another. Um, and Omar knocked it out of the park as far as I'm concerned when he blended that for him. No, is that the that one was that my is biggest the, uh, challenge. The Big Tony? The Big Chris, Tony. Is that the one that is uh, the composite to the Big Tony? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, man. Yeah, we, we talked about the blends, Kevin, and you know what's funny is when we, 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 we talked about the original blends and um, getting, and Chris, actually, I think you, you would give me three of, of each, you know, three three ideas. It was one was trying to get it as close to the original blend. Two was based off of the conversations that we had and the tobaccos that, you know, I wanted to work with and, and the flavor profile. And the third was kind of, you know, hey, Chris, you know, have at it and see what you guys can make of it. And, and I hearken back to some of the advice I've gotten over the years from Duncan and Lars, the conversations that you and I have when it comes to these, to, you know, to, to, to select the cigar. It's like, you got to go with what really feels right, you know? Um, and, and you got to go with, and even, even sometimes if someone doesn't give you all the, you know, the best feedback on it, it it's got to feel right to you. You know, if you're going to put, and for me, if I'm going to put a cigar band on a cigar, it, it's got to be the real deal. Holy field. Right. Um, and, and that's really when when the samples came through and we started going through them. Um, I was keeping a lot of notes and I remembered all the advice that all my friends have given me out throughout the years and the experiences that, that, that I've been through. And I'm like, you know, the, these are the ones that I want. You know, these are the, these these just hit hit it on the park. So had it hit out of the park. So there is some of the similarities of the original blend, but I think it's taken it that original blend to the next level. And of, of, of all four blends, really, you know, the one that for me, I just, I, I can't believe just how much I've taken a liking to it is the Sandela, the San Andreas Candela. And to look at those pictures, everybody's asked me just how brilliant and vibrant the, the Candela is. It's not that drabby green. It is just like electric popping green. Very green. Yeah. Yeah. But when uh, I'm a big fan of Candela. Uh, one of my favorite Candelas is out of Illusion. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that there's much that Dion does that couldn't be considered amazing. He's just, Illusion is, you know, they're, they're, they, they, they carved out their niche and they're holding on to it and not for dear life. I mean, Dion, he, he makes a great product. But I wanted to do something special by getting that extra special uh, Candela sourced for you because it's a big component of what you do. But I also thought that in doing so, that um, 
that it would bring your blends to a level I, I thought that would be more than aesthetically pleasing. I mean, the green is easy on the eyes, as you can see. It's not a dull green, it's a, it's a green, green, almost like a, a lighter Crayola green. But the other part is just the leaf and how it's processed is a big part of it and the source from which we're getting that for you. They know a thing or two about tobacco. So um, now, now, the, on the, uh, can, now on the candela, and, and you don't have to answer, Care, I mean, if you don't want, I mean, <laughs> seems seems like everybody that has the best candela, even Fuente with their 858, um, gets it from Oliva. Oliva the, the Oliva family has like the best candela. Is that, should we just Shout move on? To that? New, new, next question. Love Corey. Okay. He's the man. <laughs> Mm. So, uh, actually, I wanted to ask uh, Lars a quick question because okay. I don't know if I've ever asked you this, Lars. Since have you ever worked with Candela? That was my sure. next question. Yes, too. Yeah, and absolutely. I, I, I can't believe we've been on the show so many times. You and I have talked. That was the one thing I've never asked because actually, Duncan's the one who introduced me to Candela. I think you're the one who introduced me to the Fuente. Yeah, it's back in the days, dude. Uh, and and I yeah, I, I used to. And I fell I, in I, love with it. it. People didn't really buy a lot of Candela back in the day, so I just made them for myself, and uh, I smoked them myself. I didn't care. Do you have anything out now with the Candela, or just no. uh, they're just all personal stash? Personal. Uh, personal a Lars Teton personal because because like I said I, I'm like care and I'm like you, Chris. I mean, I'm here I'm, comes I'm, Lars. <laughs> I, 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 I love. I, I love Candela, like I said, and I think it's like you know, care and I we we love sharing Candelas and. That's just uh, uh, I'm always on the hunt for that next great candela, and um, and, and so far Luzione, like you said, Luzione has just knocked it out of the park. I don't, I you know, I, I don't think anybody does it does it better. You know, there there are some good can, but there's a lot of, and I tell everybody that all the time, there are more bad candelas on the market than there are good candelas. You know, it's just it, it's just one one of yeah. those one of those wrappers, and then you either get it. You know, it's either dull, you know, or it's, it's, I, I'm not, I, you know, I'm not, I don't want to say ever, but I don't think I've ever seen a candela as bright as the one as you guys are producing. I mean, this is, this is bright. This is a green, green, green cigar. I mean, you mean the, can, the candles I sent you a couple weeks ago is not that green. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, the ones from uh, the the twenty year old candelas that are you know, almost almost clear now. You yeah, know? Duncan, you know how when I go on the road, I got to stop every at every at every tobacco shop. It doesn't yeah. matter whether it's a brilliant, awesome, you know, uh, Jr's Davidoff Lounge or it's a hole in the wall tobacco shop. Oh, those so are I, the best, man. Those little so ones are really I, awesome. That's where I that's where I found most of my hidden gems. So yeah. I actually I walked into one of these. The, the the small tobacco shop um, that I stopped in before and I found uh, and I had cleared them out of all the uh, pre Davidoff Camachos, they had them buried in there. So I go in there every once in a while, I like to dig through some stuff, and I dug and then dug and I found these candelas. I was like, I don't even think these look like candelas anymore. <laughs> I mean, it was just it, it. I smoked it and it was like, okay, I get it, but it, it, you could definitely and, and we talked about this last week too. What sucks is when you have a cigar and you can tell it wasn't cared for. Yeah, yeah that's true. Because that that really, really blows. When I found those um, Camachos, the Diplomats, yeah, the original, the, I walked into a tobacco shop in North Carolina. His whole humidor is filled with pre-Davidoff Camachos, and every single one of them was just tobacco beetles, holes throughout all of them. It was just a horrible humidor. I just bought two boxes because they're still wrapped in cellophane. But I hate seeing tobacco and cigars that aren't cared for yeah, or, I, or 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 poorly i strictly blame the damn shop owners at that time yeah which, at I, that, that point it's definitely just, what are you guys doing here that, that that's heartbreaking right there you know and i mean you can, i've smoked cigars and i've had cigars where you know it's it, you could definitely tell not a lot of care was put into the construction and you get that and and you also know that there's times when you're going to get a cigar that's not going to burn right because it's handmade it's gonna you know not everything's gonna be perfect but when you see the end result because of the, the the cigar shop owner or the tobacco shop owner is not taking care of the cigars, especially the treasure trove of these Camachos. I mean, when I say it was loaded, it was loaded. Every single Vitola you could think of that they originally produced, every single one of them just riddled with holes. Now, 
I mean, I've walked into places where it's like either the Sahara Desert, that's how dry and, and hot and, and nasty. And some is like, you know, like a jungle. It's like uh, hot, humid. You're looking around, it's like you see like literally mold and you're like, come on, dudes. I mean, wow. really? And then, you and, know. And, and some of the big places are like that, too. I, I went down and uh, um, I was traveling to Tampa to see one of my vendors and uh, um, I was out of cigars. So and he's like, hey, uh, uh, Thompson Cigars, like five minutes away. You know, they have, you know, at the, the big warehouse, and they have like a, a small humidor up front, you know, so I like, just go, I'm like, all right. So I went in there, picked out a couple cigars that, that I'd never smoked before and then uh, paid for them. I was like, hey, do you want one, you know, cut? And I'm like, yeah, go ahead and cut it for me. She, she cut it and the entire cigar disintegrated into dust. Dude, and I'm like, horrible. oh, this is, this is, this is awesome. You know, so she went and got another <laughs> one and I'm like, oh my God, this is this is a big company and uh it's it's i don't know it's, it's weird you know joe silvestro used to like carry like i have like a little collector thing of my old cigars from like back in the mid to late 80s and a, a few in the early 90s that he hung on to and uh even before he passed he was like talking about like my vintage old stuff that he was pulling out and smoking and uh, uh, Chris, uh, uh, being down in Nicaragua now, I I don't know, maybe it's not true, but I just imagine it. You know, for for me, you know, I've never been to Nicaragua. Um, is it is it like a Disneyland of cigars? I mean, do you is it like like you walk down the street, <laughs> like you're hanging out with the Fuentes, the Olivas, you're hanging out, and then the Padrones, and then you're all talking, exchanging cigar. Is it really like that, or is it or is it really your you know? Basically, you're staying in your factory working 24 hours a day, and you really don't get out and talk much with everybody else. Um, my experience down here is that there, there's some people that's kind of clickish, and I don't mean that in a negative way, like a high school, like we're the preps, we're the jocks, we're the, you know, we're the cheerleaders. I mean, people hang out with who they hang out with. Um, we all tend to go to some of the similar, some of the same restaurants. Um, Occasionally, you'll come in the you come across somebody like I was in Palazzo Ole and in walks in uh, Charlie Tarano, who oh, I hadn't nice. seen since uh, you know they sold their 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 company, um, but uh, and he was there for an AJ dinner, uh, I think. Could be wrong. I hope I didn't blow up his spot, but this was years ago. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it's just like oh, there's AJ. Oh shit, there's Charlie. Uh, but. Um, the um, no, it, it's not so much like that. I won't say it's so much twenty four hours. I spend long hours in my factory because I tend to get uh, like I have the house here in San Juan, and I have my house in Esteli. I tend to get better internet connection at my house at my factory than I do at my house. So like I'll spend long nights and play Xbox and stuff like that there. <laughs> um, I'm a thirty seven year old child. I spend a lot of money. Um, but uh, the um, you know, like people kind of just. They go to work. They go home. Not that much different than than uh, than you would in the U.S. Um, some people might hang out, um, but from factory to factory, you've got so much to do on a day to day basis. I haven't personally noticed like brand X hanging out with brand Y and brand Z. Um, it may happen, but for me, I just kind of stay in my own lane these days. I go to work. I go. I usually eat dinner out, and then I'll go home. Start the next day the same way. Um, when I'm down here at the shore, which is like four and a half hours south of, of Esteli up north, like uh, I'm in the water most of the day. So I'm either bodyboarding, surfing. I'm not good at either, but I just love being on the water. That's kind of what I do. Uh, I think uh, James and Angela live down here now, uh, and they go from time to time to their factory. Uh, but they've got such a solid team up there that they can be away for that long um, without any problems. Uh, at least none that anybody knows of, um, and their product is still stellar, so something's going right. Uh, so if I'm out and I see somebody, I'll just say, hey, what's up, bud? Nice to see you. Uh, I, like, I've seen Skip at the same restaurant. I just leave him alone. Uh, I don't mean to burst your bubble, but it, I think, like, like any job, just you come home poor, and you just Poor like, Kevin. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I mean it's, it's like, you, yeah, I mean, and, and, I, and I don't want to say this like in, a, in, a, in any type of negative connotation, but you see like another white guy and you're like, oh my God, hi, and you're waving. I'm, I'm, I'm white too. And you know, like, where are you from? You know, I don't, you know, like that's a, like, wow, like, Kevin. I, I, I don't know. Like, you know, 
Yeah, We're never taking so Kevin with us. I, 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 <laughs> well, I know it's like where you're coming. Like over, I've been here since yeah. August, straight yeah. since August. So like, if I saw another foreigner, I'd be like, oh shit, that's not a guy yeah. uh, or girl, um, because there's been less people coming. I mean, the country's been open for quite some time, but less people did come. Um, I, I, I just pretty much go to work. I go home. I think a lot of people do the same thing. It's like any other job, and. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Kevin's crashed. Kevin just crashed. <laughs> yeah. He's but, he's um, he's expecting like a, a tram car of cigar smokers to take you through Esteli. Yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't know what I don't know what I was expecting. And but, Duncan, you know. we go down there with we go down there with the Kevin, he's gonna be waving at Hey look, another white person. What's up, yeah, hey? Yeah, yeah. You know. Hi. Yeah. Hi. My favorite place is is a little well, bit that, away from yeah. uh, from the cigar capitals. When I go down I stay in Granada. It's it's beautiful. It's uh the old uh, city down there, uh, it's really, really nice. Uh, it's slightly more touristy. It's a little bit more upkept, but yeah. it sort of puts you away from the cigar-esque environment, and you can also enjoy a little bit more of the culture, the people themselves. Um, we stay right in, a, in in the heart of Granada at Plaza Colón. But the fun thing in Kevin, if you're going to – I'll tell you what. Uh, on the corner, when you step out, there is a small cigar factory right there, and uh, I think uh, Claudio's Groy. Uh, he had Casa Fabili that was based out of uh, Granada as well. That was just a few blocks. So, you know, wherever you go and you stay in Nicaragua, I mean, you, you're going to run into, you know, great cigar places, man, factories and people. I, I mean, that's – every time I make it down there, dude, to me, it's – I love the place. I love the culture. The people are super friendly. Um, and again, I, I like Granada. It's just – I like the old school uh, stuff about it. I think it's beautiful. Mental no, no, no. I mean, You're all hard pressed. To not find something tobacco related in the country. Oh, hell I mean, yeah. from the fields in Jalapa, which are up by the Honduran border, yeah. to Pompega, to Esteli, on Matepe. I mean, this is spread out. I mean, Nicaragua is a pretty big country uh, geographically as far as Central America goes. So there's a lot of ground to cover. And tobacco runs from north to south. I mean, I would say it probably stops at Granada. I don't know of anything in. No, Rivas, South, South, San Juan yeah, it's, it's all north of Granada, basically, where we'd have to end up. Right. Like, when we travel up, it, it's that's that's the route right there, pretty much. But, but you'll Mars. see tobacco fields everywhere, um, oh, yeah. and whether or not they're used by prominent people or not, I mean, I've seen. I knew Davidoff had some tobacco fields that they bought up in. Uh, oh, it starts with an O, but I can't remember. It's not Omotepe, but it's. Uh, but you know, it's 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 all over, um, and in some places, it's more or less just growing tobacco like Jalapa there's some factories up in Jalapa uh, but it's more fields than anything else and then Condega there's a couple factories there but they grow tobacco there and even in Esteli with as many factories that are there I'd say that there's almost almost as much farmland as there is square footage of all the factories combined from Drew Estate to your AJ's of the world Oliva Padoma um there's a there's the families that have been doing that yeah. forever, dude. I mean, you, you, Chris, you know, there's like humble, simple farmers that you tell them how much land do you have, and they don't even know how much land. They just know yeah. all we do is we just farm tobacco. I'm like, holy shit, dude. It's like they say, yeah. hey, you see the top of that mountain up there? You see to the other top? That's my family. We've been doing that for 80 years. And you're like, who are you? Oh, my name is so-and-so Gonzalez. I'm like, never heard of you. But they sell their tobacco. I mean, and, and exactly. beautiful, lovely yeah. people, man. So and so Gonzalez? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's yeah. I'm just saying. Like, okay, just want to make sure. Yeah, Gonzalez, they say. But it's so -and -so, you know. <laughs> I so, want to ask. I, I want to ask Lars. Gonzalez, Antonio Gonzalez. There Antonio you go. Gonzalez. I want to ask Lars in his travels. Uh, like, uh, you've been all over. Uh, have you, how often have you been down in Nicaragua, and what's been your experience down there with the? Tobacco's? A lot. I just am in the factory almost all the time. You just go down there, nose I'm and grind. I'm just boat. working. I'm working the whole time. If I'm not working, uh, it, which is pretty much every single day, I'm putting in like 10, 12 hours, 15 hours a day. So I'm not really out hanging out. Doing so when, when, when's the last time because of COVID and everything else, Lord, when's the last time you were down in a factory? Right before COVID. Or just right just right before? Yeah. Well, with all you got going on, man, you, I mean, I've always said this about you, Lars. I mean, you got so much going on. The, 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 I mean, you must wake up at four in the morning and go to bed at two in, in, in the morning because your work, at, your work ethic is just has to be strict. I, well, I, you, I was waking up at three in the morning and starting my workout at four. But now that I'm training this boxer, uh, this heavyweight, 
I get up at two so I can get my workout done. Uh, I start now at like my workout at three, get my <laughs> workout done before I start training him. And then, uh, that's how that goes. I get up at two. Let's go to the bathroom. To go to the bathroom. Yeah, I, go to yeah, the bathroom. Yeah. I get up at two to go to the bathroom, I, man. That's it. But no, I go no. to bed early if I can. Like if I can, if I can go to bed early, I'll be going to sleep around somewhere six thirty, seven thirty at night. If I if I'm not if I'm working in the factory, I'm not. That's not happening. I'm going to yeah. be late, getting up early. But uh, when I'm most of the time, my schedule. I'm trying to go to bed as early as I can. If I'm not doing a show. Or if I'm not working in the factory, or sometimes even in my leather factories where I'm working, uh, I'll put same thing 15 to 20 hour days in in the factory. And the leather factory, you're standing up the whole time. You never. Yeah, your sleep. leather works are beautiful, by the now, way. Now, I don't, now, even, I don't even go ahead and sit down for lunch. Or now, now in the, in the leather in the leather factory, what what are you doing in there? Are you, is it quality control, or are you just tinkering with new things? Well, so anything that's a new uh, new prototype that I'm going to try to figure out how to make the pattern dummy proof, yeah, so that I can put it into production. Oh, I okay. usually make like twenty to fifty of those bags myself, or thirty to fifty wallets myself. So I can kind of figure out how I'm going to make the pattern. The pattern starts out like almost paper. Then I go to a hard cardboard. And then once I really got it down, then I'll make a steel uh, a die cut. Okay. So I can do a, a hydraulic press cut on it. And then that can go into production. Oh, okay. And then, and then on, on the cigar side in the cigar factory, um, are, are you... Um, and that's one th one question I've never asked. You know, um, since since uh, um, uh, your partnership with Alec Bradley, are you still, you know, just is it more quality control? Or are you working on new stuff with them? What are you doing in the the cigar factory? Well, right now it's been kind of uh, it sucks during COVID. I just yeah. really haven't been doing any traveling down there. But um, and we've had, you know, there's obviously issues during this time. But um. When I let, let me, if you want to go my real factory kind of thing, when I had my own factories that I was just working in without a partnership, um, that it was just my place since I was a young kid. Uh, you know, I trained every single roller. Uh, even the rollers that came to me usually had about 15 years of experience. Oh, wow. And uh, then I start training them to do the things my way. And I train everybody from the sorters to uh, the, the bunchers to the rollers to everybody. Wow. Now, now, uh, Chris, uh, well, one question for you. Um, uh, how many, I mean, and, and, you, and you don't have to name names if you don't want to, but um, <laughs> name, um, names. Are, are, name names. Name um, names. Are, are you, are you doing, um, are, you know, you, you talked earlier about, you know, you starting your own factory. So there was no middleman. You're kind of the you know the, the middleman now for care, I guess. Are you doing a lot of or many or three um, like private blends like care and, and other people, or is that you know you know how about how many are you are you working for? How many cigars are you producing for other people? I guess um, from from companies across Asia and Europe, there's quite a few um, in the U.S. as well, like uh, Rolling Thunder. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, you, oh, you're you're uh, for Rolling Thunder. You make uh, uh what was it Dave's uh Dave cigar? Dave's, yeah. I mean, Dave and I have known each other for a while. We've worked together uh, for a while. Um, there's other brands too. Like we made uh, the house blend for um, uh, 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 Dave Fish Cabots at Looning House up in Bell Vernon, Pennsylvania, right outside of Pittsburgh. Um, Dave and I have known each other for a while. He was my first Pittsburgh account. My family coming from Pittsburgh, it meant a lot to me. Um, with um, with him, though, I think he's looking, his long-term goal is, short-term would be to start regionally for him. Long-term, he's looking to um, uh, become more regional. So outside of the Pittsburgh spectrum into the mid-Atlantic and stuff like that. And uh and grow and eventually maybe become a national and international brand. Uh, I know Dave's been in business since 2005 or six. Uh, so like those are where I actually find the most enjoyment. And it's funny how you asked me before. It's like, yeah, I have uh, Jason Lois, who's our, our, our CEO. Uh, so he can focus on that. I love the collaborative effort of creation. 
Like I'm a guy. Uh, if, when I got my first DVD player, I didn't even read the instructions. Plugged it in, and figured out how to work it, and stuff like that. Um, when I was doing, uh, when I was big into car audio competitions, I would like figure out how a PlayStation works so I could take it apart and then put it into my car. And uh, uh, my father found out through quite a few speeding tickets and other tickets, moving violations. I was playing PlayStation as I was driving. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like just pimp my ride and figuring out how to put it back together. That's the biggest part. So when I get to work with other brands, like I'm not going to take credit for the blends. That's my team. I'm, I'm learning more and more about tobacco every day. I'm, I'm trying to learn as much as I can um, as, as, as quickly as I can and retain as much as I can. So the process of creating something new is what really appeals to me. So like it, it's a win win for Jason up uh, running the U.S. operations and me running the biz, uh, this business side down here, because I get to have a creative and collaborative uh, opportunity with all the customers that we work for. And there's quite a few other brands we're talking with right now and working out blends with, and I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. So the way my mind works, that, that works better for me. Uh, so yes, there is other brands we're working with and have worked with. Uh, there's uh, stores within the Philippines and Indonesia, uh, Hopefully, we're going to be doing one for a German distributor uh, in in the near future. Here, um, I can't name names. Not, I just it hasn't come to fruition. So I want to try and will it into oh, existence, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I just like like count wise. So yeah. So okay. So yeah. So you, you yeah, can't do too deep. I mean, okay. There's at least yeah. a dozen other companies that we're working for uh, and working with. I should say not for or, or for globally uh, at this point in time with uh, three solid brands, brands and hope and in the near future, an additional two more in the US. Um, so yeah, um, and that's a big part of it is like, uh, we've grown substantially, but as Lars can attest, like some of the best ways to offset some of your cost of growth is to work with other fa work with other brands and make cigars for them as well. It True helps story. offset your overhead. Absolutely. Jennifer wants to know, are you near any coffee plantations? It's funny because my assistant, Saul, his father owns like 2,000 acres of coffee plantation in Jalapa. And I was just even asking if I could, because uh, we're opening up a whiskey and cigar bar in uh, Hawaii, in Waikiki. And I was like, can I buy some coffee off of them? And all 2,000 acres are spoken for. Like, I can't get any allocation. Really? Two or Sorry, and, Jennifer. And, 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 and more specifically, she wants to know if you're near a Starbucks coffee plantation. <laughs> She, pro she probably, did, sure she probably didn't want to just go out there and say that, you know. Man, no, she, no, she she would come right out and say yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. She she wants it right from. She wants a price break. Uh, so she, she, so so Chris Jennifer says I'll just drop her off in that uh, that uh, those two thousand acres uh, when we come down to visit. Um, I don't know if Jennifer oh, oh, will ever yeah. come back. <laughs> We'll th throw a bag, throw uh, a bag yeah. on our back and put it work. You bring you out to the bar out in Hawaii. I mean, yeah. so Tony so coffee, so, bro, it's where it's so at. So do you know you, 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 you talked about the uh, the eight oh eight crew out there? Do you know Chris Duque, yeah. the eight oh eight dirty rat? Uh, I've met him one time. He used to oh, okay. hang out with. Uh, there used to be a, a group, a smoke group out there called um, the eight oh eight Smoke Mafia, and that's yeah. where I first met. Uh, Bernie, he was a, a member of that, and there was a group of people. Every Thursday, they'd get together, and I shit you not, apologize for the language, but like, they would rotate the house that they would meet at. And uh, Kurt was the house that I met at when I was out there the first time, and his mother put on a spread of food, and you would have thought that you were at some downtown Hong Kong or Manila buffet. I mean, the food was phenomenal from the pancit to the lechon to everything. I mean, they threatened to put on a pig roast for me and they did. <laughs> and I'm like, it's like 20 dudes and there's a pig over there. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. Whatever. We're going to have an impromptu luau. Um, but um, I know Chris, I know of Chris Duque. I don't interact with him as much. I think he's on a different area of the island. I live in Waikiki myself. Um, oh, do, do you know Butch in Waikiki? He opened up that cigar lounge, Uncles. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, um, well, let's hear that. <laughs> what, let's hear that story. Well, yeah, yes, tell yes. Him. Actually, in his, my bar is in his location. Yeah. Oh, my God. So you do that. Book. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not going to talk much on Butch because I don't like to really denigrate people. If that's no problem. That's like statement right there. But, uh, yeah, um, all that space is available. <laughs> and, I, and I took part of it. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I don't, it, it's personal for me because my friend was the architect on that project, and he also had a, a pizzeria there as well. Uh, right. That's no there. It's in the Lalo Hotel in downtown Waikiki right next to International Market. And, um, yeah, I mean, let's move on. <laughs> I can go all night. <laughs> as Daryl would say, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I still I, listen. I still, uh, uh, Lars, has your shoulder injury has it, uh, or your shoulder replacement injury? God Almighty, that's, that's such an understatement. Has it slowed up your cooking? Because I, I, I still uh, yes, think definitely. we all have to get up once. The, but the, but don't worry about it. You can still come up, and I still will cook. I, I should be out of this thing pretty soon, but I should be able to start back into like cooking mode within about the next few weeks. Because I'll tell you what, I was excited not only about having Chris on the night and talking about um, the Stogie Road Cigars partnering with, with Chris and, and the brands up and the blends that we're coming out with, but <laughs> Lars this afternoon, um, I'm sitting there at my computer and I'm texting and I'm working away, and then all of a sudden uh, I get I get a, a picture that was sent to me, and it's this. The Stogie Road barbecue sauce. Nice. And then Car and Carolina and Carolina style at that. Car Car Carolina style, if I'm if uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is a uh, is a mustard based. Uh, it's I more vinegary and mustard, mustard yeah. but it's a little different. This one has it has all those elements in it, but it's like a little more advanced. It's 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 really good. And we're excited I was, about I, this. I was eating it this morning uh, on my pork. Uh, my uh, I had mm. a, a delicious uh, roast pork shoulder, and I I was uh, pouring that sauce on it. It was so good. Now, 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 do you, do you also have you know along with your other factories? Is it do you do you work with a dedicated team to make your sauces and spices? Yeah, well, I create everything when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, do, 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 you, do you like you have a little lab in your house and then you perfect it, then you bring it to a factory or do you go somewhere and tinker? No, I, have an, I have another factory that I, I work in out of, out of that. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Kev, I, I got the whole cigar thing going. And then Jennifer, she's just a great cook. Duncan, you've eaten yeah. her, I mean, yeah. I mean breakfast, dude. everything. And we got I'm introduced. Waiting, I'm waiting for the restaurant when, when it opens up, man. When Jennifer's oh. restaurant opens up, dude, that's funny. Wow. She she didn't she didn't cook for me. We went out for to eat. Yeah, it's because we understood that you like chicken nuggets, and yeah. Jennifer's like, well, f f you know, I'm gonna make this big meal, and Kevin's gonna be like, okay, pass the ketchup. Where are the nuggets? <laughs> <laughs> um, but we got introduced to Lars, uh, a lot of his seasoning, and Jennifer just fell in love with it and uses a great deal of, of these, of these you know, spices and hot sauce. And we're like, you know, she wants to get involved in that and in coffee as well. So, um, you know, working working with you, Lars, on that's been s such an awesome honor. I mean, you know, and, and also working hey, with Chris with amazing. the cigars. I mean, it's it's pretty cool that we're not only just you know, in my opinion, I think that this you know the cigar lifestyle, Duncan. <laughs> I tell people this story all the time. We started doing this show five years ago, and it really started with the cigar lifestyle. Everything from the music to the art to the food to to to, to the clothing, you know, to everything. And these spices allow us to kind of expand and still you know keep to that original vision of uh having a show and, and 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 even a shop and a business that is cigar lifestyle related but now jennifer gets to go more into the spices and the sauces and everything and i smoke a lot of the peppers that i'm using in the uh in the sauce so you get that natural smoked flavor you you did jessica or jennifer i apologize and then now i just screwed up by calling you jessica wow so, you are uh, screwed bro i am screwed so yes Hey, Jennifer, uh, by the way, I love porterhouse steaks. Yeah, it, it, Jess, Jennifer. Jennifer, but, uh, yeah, Jennifer, not Jessica, Kevin. Yeah, um, I, I, it's it's the Jersey, it's the Jersey J and uh, Jersey J and and uh, right, that's all you got to say, right? I mean, that, that, that's it. So, so Lars, have you found like d diversification has been the key to your 
longevity and your success just just finding those niches and perfecting them yeah i i think so it's also just being old and then uh <laughs> <laughs> and then starting it when i was really young so like i got into the bag business not because i had some kind of love for making leather stuff my sisters came to me and wanted me to make stuff for their barbie dolls so like bags for their barbie dolls and clothes for their barbie dolls so that's how I started out with, uh, with that. And then uh, I was making little seasonings and sauces when I was just like a little kid going around trying to sell them door to door. Yeah. Daryl's asking Kevin, what's he drinking? That's that's about. Yeah. But, but, I, 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 I can guess what it is. Yeah. B B Bacardi and diet. Bacardi and I, and then, and then I, I am smoking one of Kara's cigars too. Um, I, I'm not sure which barber pole, but he, you know, he, he sent us quite a few so I, i'm not sure which one this is so but it's it's quite one of a them. few you make me sound like i just give away my stuff yeah of. yeah it's uh um uh, like, but but yeah, but, I'm, but i'm but i'm but i'm one of yours too i have no idea which one it is oh wait i'm not Thank but you. Uh, I, I was waiting uh, for that duncan yeah. but, 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 but i that. but i am stoked about trying this can because jessica smoked this last this candela connecticut i haven't smoked this one yet so i, I can't okay. wait i can't wait to smoke that one and 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 just enjoy it and then uh um you know check check that out because like i said i'm not only a lover of candela i'm just a lover of just this is an amazing looking cigar i mean just sitting in a box on the shelf i mean this cigar would just draw me in because it's so bright so so vivid you know against that you know you know the 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 two wrappers they just, they just do well together and um as a can like I said, Candela lover, I, I can't wait. I gotta I, tell you, when I when I got the samples too, I, I had my cigar bands come in, and I was so excited just to put one on it, and it look, I mean, it, it really complements it well. The, the the one thing I was really happy with, Chris, was, um, and it was the rendition um, of the Edition Thirty Five, the original blend. I mean, that really for me, uh, when smoking that. Um, based off our conversations and then the interpretation of it um, was because that was the first cigar I'd come out with. That's, you know, some people say it's your flagship, whatever they want to call it. But um, that one, just the, the, the name behind it, the meaning behind it meant so much. And uh, the way that it, it, it came out was exactly, exactly the way I envisioned it. I mean, it really just it was like i've always liked the original but this was like the original on steroids not just yeah, doing uh, steroids is good kids yeah <laughs> <laughs> steroids is bad okay when we were uh talking I, I i mean and yeah that conversation went on four times as long as i expected it to but again we had a lot of commonality between the wilmington police department and our, our mutual friends there and <laughs> yeah we were not both detained at the wilmington police uh, department yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no that did not happen yet maybe i don't know there's a lot of future ahead of us uh but um you know it's uh being able to i mean that that's the part of the collaborative effort that i like working at down here i mean jason's a He's an amazing salesperson, so I can't speak uh, en enough kudos to him and the job that he's uh, doing and has been doing throughout COVID, no less. With uh, our, I mean, call it what you want. We're, we're relatively a new brand at this point with uh, with the rebrand and the rebuild. But um, in, in working with blends and just hearing the passion that was exuding from your voice uh, and, and the way that you talked about it, I mean, I mean, to say that I was scared, I mean, you said the challenge before when I was asked about what, what was the blend that gave me the most challenge, the challenge was actually blending something he'd be happy with. I mean, there's not a customer that comes to our door that, I mean, and we don't solidify production with every one of them. I mean, some people go other places and they're willing, they're more than capable and, and, and able to do that. No harm, no foul and shake our hands as friends. But it's with the people that we work with blending something that they're passionate about um, that makes them happy that they're happy with satisfied with and uh, you know I mean I want to do I want to knock it out of the park and back a thousand for you on every single thing I do for you though. but the original yeah that, that's always the uh, that's always the thing that sticks with us as, as we go on 
and traverse this thing we call life. So uh, I'm now, very, now, very um, flattered and very, very pleased and relieved that you're happy. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and before we get to Daryl's question real quick, um, uh, sorry, Kerr. Uh, no, no, it's fine. I mean, be yeah, Daryl, don't be angry with Kevin. He's just, he's got to, he's got to step all over your questions. Okay. Yeah, that's it. You know, uh, uh, one thing I want to ask, so, so, so how was um, Care as a, a brand owner coming to you wanting a cigar compared to other brand owners. So I, you know, so I, I talk to a lot of brand owners. I can answer um, that, Kevin. Uh, like, like, like boutique. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, and there are, you know, not surprised. I mean, it might be surprising to a lot of people listening. There are a lot of brand owners that don't know a lot about their, their own cigar. Um, don't know what, you know, but knowing care and just talking to him about these, these blends how meticulous he is, you know, about every single detail. Um, um, was that, you know, is, is that the norm or is care like, like he, he's like the oddball, like he wants to be involved. He's got to know everything, very meticulous, knows what he wants. And um, um, is that, is that something you've, you know, that you have an experience or is that something, you know, with the people that you work with, you find that a lot. Um. Quick answer to Daryl's question, just so I don't forget it. <laughs> Free blends is by and by and large our most popular cigar, um, and uh, Kara's actually gone out of his way to find them. I don't know how he did. <laughs> Can't, but, tell uh, you. Can't tell you my He's secret. got his people. Um, but, to, but to address your question, Kev, uh, I would tell you this: um, he is very easy to work with, and I think as far as some people that come out with um, their own brand whether they're existing brands or whether they're new brands. Look, I mean, I think Jose Blanco said it best from what at least I've directly overheard is you're always learning. You're never yeah. going to know everything. And I would say that the people that last the longest, like the James of the world, the Angela, the James and Angela's of the world, the skips of the world. And I'm going to, I could, I could go on listing names, but I won't because the list would be very long. Is that understanding that, um, you know, you're always going to be learning something. Uh, you can never be expected to learn to know everything as it pertains to your brand i mean you, you try and learn the most you can about what you have uh as it pertains to care um he was open to some suggestions and i'm not gonna say that i'm the best person in the world to give them i'm definitely not the most experienced person in this industry to give my um, or options but he was open to suggestion I know there's a couple things that were leaning one way and he might have went a different way. Um, he was uh, open to listening, but some of these suggestions weren't just coming from me. They were coming from Omar Blender, from Francisco, our production manager, um, from some people that work in our marketing. So I think that the key to this is uh, in CARE's success is, you know, he realizes like myself that we don't know everything yet. And it's probably not going to be a day where we know everything. Um, so he was very open to suggestion on some small things and some medium things, and he had a very good vision, but he was at least open to listening to options. Whether he took them or not, that was his decision, but he listened. Um, most brand owners I have found, with the brand owners we work with, they've all been open to suggestion. Whether or not they took it, that, that's been their decision. Um, you know, like, like with Dave, I think uh, at, at Leaning House, he was looking at, two blends but he found that of the samples we sent him he fell in love with a lot of them and um he, he came up with this idea on his own where uh he does limited boxes so he'll do like 25 boxes like box <laughs> box, press boxes okay. um and uh he'll put five of each blend in the box you know so that works for dave and uh i, I suggested that the care like when he comes out with this i know i know his plan and I, i'm not going to blow up his spot and tell you how he's planning on uh presenting it <laughs> but um that's that's his place to do he's the brand owner but you know he listened to that to that uh, decision and he's, he at least gave weight to it but i think being open is a very good way of of, of progressing if you're so vision in your own vision like we found this in the very beginning do we lose chris i think so i can finish I that sentence for him. collateral cable connection collateral cables just shut blew down. it well i think he was getting ready to say that care is awesome no he and wasn't he's, yeah no. yeah i was i was i, I think <laughs> that's where I think it was, was going he's going there uh, he's the best and he's very open to <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, um, you know, I, it, he, you know, Chris hit on a few things there, and, and I actually wanted to kind of, uh, first of all, you know, compliment, you know, a lot of my friends, uh, uh, whether it's um, uh, Duncan, who I've known such a long time, I've learned so much from. Uh, Laura is even our conversation that we've had, you know, there's a lot of trust there. Um, a lot of, uh, um, a lot of, I, I have two ears and one mouth and I try and use them accordingly. Um, and, and even Kevin, the feedback you give Daryl, I mean, I, I meet with Daryl all the time and, and, and smoke cigars with him. Um, I always try and be a sponge because, you know, you can learn from everybody and, and Lars, you've been doing this a long time. Have you stopped learning? Never. I'm always trying to learn new stuff. And and you see, that's you know when when you're talking about you know uh, particularly you know with cigars, it, I don't think I don't care if it's anything. Is you have a vision, but you got to be you got to be flexible. And you know, I'm the same guy that you see here that I am when the camera turns off and you you know we turn off the video and we we sign off, um, and. I got I to gotta give a, a huge shout out to, to Duncan Ramon Echavarria wow. because, um, you know, I walked into his cigar shop, what, six years ago and met Duncan and it was just, you know, he's one of those tobacconists when you walk in, it's like, hey, what do you want to smoke? Well, I like, you know, uh, my father. And then you leave and you leave with, you know, you have the intention of going for like two cigars. You leave with 10 and not one of them was a cigar you went into looking for. And you get introduced to a, to a whole new world. And um, and just uh, being um, on the show together and, and Duncan spend, and spending so much time with him, I learned so much about the tobacco industry and about tobacco. Um, it's it's just been very applicable to what I'm able to do now. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I was uh, <laughs> like, like uh, you know, I always say thank you. I, I like to mess with you and bust your balls also. But, uh, dude, you know. You wouldn't be you if you didn't. You were like always like one of those like really good uh, you know customers. You know you were open. You wanted to uh, to find out you know what was new, what was uh, interesting, what was different. And uh, a lot of times, you know, I always say it's if you're a customer, man, don't ever be afraid to talk to the tobacconist. I think uh, I think it's a lot of times tobacconists dropping the ball on making sure that they are taking care of their customers. You want to earn those customers. You want them to come back. You want to have that repeat. You know, over and over. Uh, interaction with them the right way so uh, and, and vice versa the tobacconists out there sometimes you know you get some great ones and sometimes you know they don't even say hello to you dude you walk in hey oh, how you doing a lot of them and, and, on and their phone yeah, yeah. yeah let me know if you need something, let yeah. me know if you need something. You're, you're, you're right and then uh with a follow-up question to that duncan and, and i've seen it, it seems like it's getting more prevalent um I, i'm finding it harder to find like really great tobacconist. Um, I, and I, and I don't know what it is. Maybe there's more cigar shops opening, but you're, you're going into these places and you're, you're I'm seeing more and more people that like, 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 uh, um, a carrot said they're, they're on their phones that they don't know what they're in. Unless you go in there and like, Hey, I want a Padron 64. Where do you carry that? You know, um, Jessica and I, we go into, um, lounges all over the country when, when we travel and I'm uh, like, hey, you know, like, like, what do, what do you got? You know, like, you know, the, and sometimes they'll ask, you know, what are you smoking? And like, well, this is what I smoke and give, give me something different. What, what do you got? And then a lot of people they're like, eh, I don't know. I um, agree with you, man. I agree do, 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 with what you said. Okay. I, 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 there's a lot more of that out there, Kevin. Um, there there seems to be a lot more of that. Yeah, do you think that's do, this idea that, you know, <laughs> Hey, I'm going to open up a cigar shop and boom, it does it all by itself magically. I mean, you, you, for example, you could be a great, passionate cigar lover, and you are good to go with that. You open up a cigar shop. Well, like I said earlier, it's a team effort. You know, you got to maybe – you can't do it all. Maybe get the right guy who's going to really interact with your customer base, uh, who's going to bring knowledge about studying what's going to go into the humidor, what's going to sell, what's not going to sell, how is it going to be received by the folks, you know, how much interaction is that guy – gonna build with the reps you know don't, don't ever yeah. be afraid to talk to the reps man those reps are there for that make a good relationship with them you know uh, 
definitely, I, I, I agree 100% with what you said. I think in the past couple of years, there has been a huge push to open up cigar shops, and folks are forgetting, well, who am I going to be able to get to introduce cigars to those people that I now have in this brand spanking beautiful shop, and then they don't know how to keep them. You know, a, a beauty is fantastic. You know, you can build a stunning cigar lounge, but at the end of the day, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and it may insult folks or not, you do not smoke a damn chair. You don't smoke a pretty painting on a wall. You smoke good cigars. And if you got a good tobacconist in there, he's going to introduce you to great cigars. And he's the guy who's going to build up that steady client base. He's going to drive that. And you're going to make money that way. I mean, or she. You know, or she. Or she. Or she. You know, I know a ton. Of, like, yeah, Duncan forgets it's 2021. Stuff. Duncan forgets that sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, when, I'm women sorry. can drive and. That. Yeah, women can drive and vote and own businesses now, Duncan. So, uh, yeah, Kate, Caitlyn that. Jenner is going to be the governor of California. I'm all in. There you yeah, go. yeah. <laughs> I also, I also wonder too, just because as you said, with all these different cigar shops opening up, you know, when you open up a cigar shop, you got to think of your overhead. You got to think of who you can employ, and maybe they just don't have the ability to employ someone who has the experience of a tobacconist. You know, in order to have that type of um, money, if you will. To, 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 to pay out for someone. I don't know. I mean, because I, I can tell you a lot of the shops I've walked into, it's usually been someone who's a little bit younger, maybe not a, a cigar smoker, but it's, you know, maybe someone that they can get to, uh, to run the register, you know, while they're away um, at a lower cost. No, it, it, exactly. And, and a good tobacconist is kind of like, you know, um, a good factory manager. Um, Chris, now, when you were opening up your factory, did you find that? Because you know, I, I can only imagine, you know, like, like so, okay, so so I'm a mechanic by, by trade, a, a really good mechanic. So really when, good. When, yeah. So when a shop has someone like, like me, like our company, like we have these stores that have like the, these mechanics and you don't ever want to lose them. Um, but so other shops opening up have a hard time finding good mechanics. Um, was it hard finding a good, um, uh, someone to, to, to run your factory floor? Because I can only imagine like, you know, that's like a hard job to find. Cause you know, when you, when these factories find that person, they don't ever want to let them go. You know, so how, how hard was that finding um, a, good, a, a great factory manager? The best answer for that would be, um, I thought that would be the most difficult position to fill. Okay. I mean, finding a good admin, I don't mean to say that admins are a dime a dozen because I'm not trying to take away from, uh, you know, the complexity level that's involved in that job. But when you're looking at production management, I mean, look, just look at Esteli because I know that's really the best. You know, Santiago, Don Lee, you've got some amazing tobacco, uh, amazing factories in those cities as well, but I know Esteli the best. So as it pertains here, it's like <clears throat> some people here have been working in tobacco, like Lars, just here at a farm level or a knowledge level. Uh, and when I say knowledge, I mean, it might not be farming, it might be working with the, the, with the leaf that like Lars, I mean, they've been doing this since <clears throat> they're 14, 15 years old. Um, so finding people that have the knowledge is less difficult than I thought. Finding people that have the knowledge and the drive to be more than, say, a roller or okay. more than a production manager or more than just somebody that works in Razago or Despolilo, uh, which would be like a prep area, and, and to oversee those areas, it, it's finding people that have the belief in themselves. Yeah, that's true. Good, good, so good, good, good. It, it's, that's the biggest challenge I've noticed in, in, in at the factory level is like, for instance, I have a phenomenal roller. Uh, I have, I have phenomenal rollers, but they just want to be rollers. They don't want to be anything else. Um, and I think that they could be good in something else, meaning like as a production manager, but they're just content being where they are. And I don't and, understand and, the and psychology there's, and there's, behind and, them. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah nothing wrong with that. We, we like I exactly. said, in, 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 in right. our field, we got we got really great tire technicians, lube technicians, and sometimes they have aspirations of of doing something else. And you're like, 
please God, please can you just keep doing your job? You're fantastic at it. So I imagine like a roller, you know, you get a fantastic roller and it's like, I'd like to try something else. And like, mm, can I pay you more money just to keep doing your job? You know, because you're really, really good at it. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, and, and I would it say was, it's like willing and able. I would say in Esteli specifically, there's a lot of people that could do the job. It's finding people that want to do the job. Um, okay. Yeah. And and it's confident that, enough in wanting to do it. It's humility. like there's a beautiful level of humility also with those folks as well that a lot of them, because of the nature of who they are, where they're from and whatnot, when they found what they were good at, it almost is to them, man, I'm, I'm a, I love doing this. I This is what I want to do. And it, it, there is a, a slight fear factor. If I do anything else, can I ever go back to doing this if I'm not good elsewhere? So I agree with what you said. A lot of times is you have talent. It is almost the finding the people who are going to go beyond that talent segment and step up into leadership roles, which is a challenge. In, and I don't want to say this in a negative way, like in certain countries, but it is that they have found a wonderful place. They're doing great at it. And all of a sudden they think, you know, this is it. I'm, I'm going to be here. I got a job for a long, long time. I don't know if I'm going to do anything else, but I'm great at this. And for you, uh, as you said, uh, Esteli is, in, humbly said, is the capital of some of the best people out there. I mean, truly. I mean, it, it, if you want greatness in the tobacco industry in Nicaragua, you go to Esteli. You know, it is finding now in there who can step up and say, okay, guys, now I'm going to be leadership role so I can oversee as well. So uh, and there's a multitude good, uh, of reasons why they might want to do that too. Like I've noticed, and I don't mean to cut you off there, is like um, it, it could be like most of your production people, most, not all, uh, are in like my age bracket or younger. So, yeah. you know, they know with yeah. management comes more responsibility. I, and, you know, I'm going to make my 300 to 500 cigars a day. I'm going to cut out whether that's at five o'clock or whether that's at 4 30 or three, or 3 30 or four. You know, and uh, like our production manager, Francisco, he's amazing, but he's there almost as long as I am. Um, my uh, my my factory manager is long. Uh, the only person that stays at the factory longest is me. I'm usually the one that locks up when I'm in SLA. But my work ethic is just I, I, I want to put that there. And it's not that their work ethic is less. It's that they're just at a different stage in life, maybe where they don't want to take on the added hours and I can't go out or go back to my family or I can't go out with my friends. You know, and I know what it's like to be in my twenties. I remember those days, like not all the time, you know, once five o'clock rang around it's like, which bar are we going to after work today? You know, it's yeah, just stuff it, like that. Yeah. You know what? That, that's also okay. There, like you said the age thing, you know, they, they got a good job. They got good steady pay. Yeah. And at that age, um, they're also looking to enjoy a little bit of that. And th again, that works for and against, you know, it, 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 there's, there's there's two sides to that. But man, I think that uh, that you you're onto the the, the secret of, of success right there from everything I've heard. Um, congratulations, man! Uh, you're on, you're on point uh, to great things. God bless that. Now, now with that being said, on your rollers, like um, um, a great book that anybody has never read. It's called Once a Cigar Maker. Fantastic book. Talked about the cigar industry in the uh, uh, the late 1800s, and um. um now, Chris and Lars, you know, both of you now on your, your rollers um, and, and some factories I find are still like this. Some are not. Do they roll a set amount of cigars per day and they're done? Because it used to be back in the day, you know, you, you'd come in whenever you want. You had you either had 300, 500, whatever you rolled a day. So that's just what you rolled per day. You could come in at eight o'clock. You come in at 10 o'clock noon, finish up at two, finish up at five. How is that really? Because I really, you know, haven't talked to too many factory owners and, and asked that question. Um, or is it, you know, you, you punch in at nine, you work till what, whatever five. Um, so how, how does that work with you, Chris, and then Lars? You know, the same same question. Um, I'll, I'll go first, and then Lars, please go for it. Please follow up for us. Uh, all of our people come in at like seven seven thirty. I'd say seven o'clock. And, you know, um, they know they all have a minimum. We established a minimum that based on what your production is for the day, like our three blends takes more time and 
output is less because you're rolling that barber pole of three different wrappers the way that we roll it. Yeah. Um, takes more prep time. Okay. Uh, you got to cut more leaf. You have to uh, examine more leaf. Uh, and, and so, whereas the minimum might be 300 for our torch line, our, our Veritas Maduro, our 412, three blends, you might be lucky to get 220, 250. Uh, if we're rolling short filler, like our Cuban sandwiches, our, our Hotel Passion line, um, the um, you might get 500, you know, but, you know, we also, they have a, a minimum they need to make, and, and some of the secret sauce is like you pay different for different blends. So more complex blends, you make more because you produce less. More uh, basic blends, you pay less because you produce more. Um, okay. You know, so they'll hit that goal and they pretty much go. It It's not to say that if I said, hey, we need to make an order and it needs to go out by a certain period of time, they'll stay later if I ask them and I'll pay more to do that. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, there's there's times when some factories, I mean, we've not been immune to it where we have a deadline in place and we're working till nine at night. I mean, that happens. Um, you know, so uh, Lars has been in the industry a lot longer than myself. Uh, and he can speak more to that over, you know, as to how that's happened over time. But the bottom line is, like, everybody comes in at the same time with, with us. Um, based on the blend that they have for the day, they have their goal they have to make. You know, they have to make at least this. And not just make it. It has to be accepted. So once it passes the quality controls, the first step of quality control is production manager looking at every cigar that was produced today. This one might be... You know, it might have a pocket that's not accepted. Go back and make more. Or this this one might have a problem with the cap. Go back and redo it. Um, we we pride ourselves on having a very minimal level of, of rejects. Our, okay. our, it's in the single digits. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, and Lars, uh, you have yeah. a lot more experience, so I'm sure you can speak more to that. Well, in a lot of my factories, I really like to just pay people salary. And then uh, I just make sure that the quality of the production is the top of the line quality. And I really don't like them to overdo the amount of production because then things get sloppy and people miss stuff. So I'd rather keep it small and boutique and keep everything super high quality. All right. Now, now uh, uh, on that, um, um, do they get uh, uh, cigars at the end of the day? They, you know, cause back in the day you used to get two cigars you get to take home with you. you well, get to this smoke. is a good thing that you're talking about being a mechanic because yeah. like a, a bunch of my workers, I would let them take boxes to their mechanics so they fix their car for cigars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that, well, back in the day, that's how I did lot, that all the time. That, that's how the, that's how a lot of cigar makers made a little bit extra money back in the day, where they got to take at the end of their they got to smoke during the day, you know, for free. You know, uh, whatever you know, their 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 you know quota, you know, or you know, quantity they're allowed to smoke, and then they got to take at the end of the day home two to three cigars per day, and then on the weekends they would actually sell those cigars to local shops instead of smoking them. Do they, do, uh, Chris, do do your cigar makers get to take any cigars home at the end of the day? Is that still a is that still a thing? Be, be careful, Chris and Lars, when you um, answer this question, because I think Kevin's going to use it to try and justify taking a car home at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, yeah. yeah I, I took oh, this if alternator home. to fix home. a car for me for cigars, <laughs> done, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, so is that um, a thing? They, do they get cigars? They get a uh, they get free cigars. Um, like like Lars brought up a good point. There's there's two basic ways you can pay your production staff. You can pay salary and you dictate, like he says, uh, that that's a way of um, almost guaranteeing quality control because they know that, okay, I'm making X, but I have to make X um, yeah. on a daily yeah. basis. We pay on production, so they're paid on the cigars that are accepted. Um, now, like I said before, we're, we're blessed with the team that we have. My production crew um, is stellar. Our rejects are are low um but there's some factories where that may not may not be the case you know uh some people might be making 500 cigars a day with 200 not passing inspection obviously that costs the factory owner money because that's tobacco wasted on rejected product oh yeah um, or like um you know most of our rollers have single digit rejects throughout the day 
So the wow. time it takes to redo <laughs> those are, are next to none. Now, I'm a little bit more strict and anal retentive, and I understand Lars's uh, historic payment method, and I understand the, the validity behind it because I, I'm – I'm not going to make that if I don't make my minimum. And if I don't make my minimum, I'm not going to stay there long. Um, you know, it's it's almost a, a, yeah, a revolving door. Really, that really is true. If you right. keep that kind of thing, that that'll keep it. Let's see, there's Mary. She's in uh, Esteli right now. Well, sometimes Mary. they just keep the rejects. <laughs> and and <laughs> what, what yeah. you can do with those depending on how it's rejected. And Mars, please click me. Hey I'm Mary, wrong, how you doing, baby? You might be able to sell them as factory seconds. You know, they didn't go through, so that's your bundle cigar. Now we um, you're always trying to monetize as much as you can. What we do with our we, – we make a, a Cuban sandwich-style cigar for our quote-unquote bundled cigar, and that just means that we're rolling long filler with the trimmings of all the uh, short filler that fell off. I mean, it, it's hard to keep continuity because short filler is a part of that. And you know what the you know what the cigar is, and it's priced accordingly. But you know, you have to monetize as much as you can within the production process with with, with minimizing the amount of loss, and that's one of the ways of doing it. Um, but as it pertains to how you pay your production staff, it's, it's just one of two methods: you can pay them on production, or you can pay them salary. Um, both can work. It's harder to do it the way that we do it, um, and as we grow, that might become something that's uh, not impossible. You know, as we have more staff and you're making more cigars, you have to have more production managers. So you can, in, in essence, lose that hands-on inspection method um, because it just might take more time. But um, for us, so far, we've had next to no problems. That's not to say that something might not come up in the future. And we'll have to address that when we do. And we might pivot and shift to the method that Lars has, has used in the past. Uh, you know, and there's benefits to both sides. You know, I'm not paying for cigars that don't pass inspection because I'm paying on production. It's yeah. not just what they're making. Yeah. It's what's being passed. Right. And I might, Duncan, uh, Duncan say hi to her in Spanish. Hola, Mari, ¿cómo estás? Espero que estés pasándola súper bien en Nicaragua. Que Dios te bendiga, mi amor. He just made fun of us. Hi, Mary. He just made fun of all those. He just said, welcome to my show. This is my show. I've always noticed the interesting thing about Spanish is it seems like it takes five times as many words to say the same thing. In uh, yeah, he, he just said, hello, Mary. It took him 85 seconds. I timed it. Uh, awesome. yeah. Oh, don't she pick is, on Duncan. She is awesome. I love this girl. <laughs> Very intelligent. Cool. She's super cool. You know what the you know what the hardest part about the show tonight is? Yes. <laughs> me, the most me. difficult. Me. How, how, well, besides that, <laughs> yeah. that goes with the territory, Kev. <laughs> is, is that you know, we usually end the show with a Lars song, um, and he's I, and he's 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 I, he's, already, he's ham. He's baby, strung up. I'm already prepared. I'm going acapella rap. Don't worry. I got oh. it. <laughs> nice. I got get it, it, baby. Get it. Okay, you, you ready for me, baby? Uh, well, not quite yet, because I did want to ask you a question based off of something that, that Chris had mentioned earlier. And, you know, we talked about um, folks and, and the different roles that they, that they play. And, you know, some may be able, but maybe not willing to, to, to step up to a new role. Or some people may be uh, willing, but not able to, to take on more responsibility, a new role. With, with you... Um, with everything that you're in, uh, what has been that one thing that's allowed you to maybe venture into a new area um, fearless? Me? Yeah, you. Oh, uh, that's easy to tell you that. Um, uh, like Chris in a spinning being, wheel of death. Yep. Just being really stupid. I never knew that I <laughs> couldn't do anything. Not um, yeah, I was already diagnosed stupid when I was a kid, so... Um, I just didn't know that I couldn't do stuff. Well, so I just tried it out and all like, oh yeah, that looks like something I, I want like to do and I'm just gonna try to do that. And then, you know, luckily I, just being old, it just worked out because I learned how to do it better. And, and, and is it is it been because I know it's been that way for me, you know, and, and, and uh, when when you're told you can't do something. 
Like, like that, that can't be done. Like, like, no, you know, that's not the way it's, it's always been done. Right. You should, you should do it this way. Has that always been kind of like a, a driving force as well? You know, people what? say, no, no, you, you can't do that. Um, no, not really. I was just too dumb to understand that <laughs> they knew better than I did. So I was Duncan, like, stupid doesn't work for okay. us if it works for Lars. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, I guess uh, I'm going to just do it. <laughs> That's going to happen. I, That's I, fantastic. I, I, can I, can, I can fix things day. or whatever, figure it out. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious! So, 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 so care a. Uh, um, yeah, I, I don't know. One, one of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, I know we're getting down on time, but um, sorry, go ahead. What, what it? It's your show. Go ahead. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, uh, um, is has this been harder than you thought? You know, rebranding, reintroducing your cigars. Did you think at the beginning, okay, it's going to be fairly easy, fairly seamless? Has, has this been a, um, a harder undertaking than, than you thought it was going to be? Um, yes and no. Um, I didn't think it was going to be. Um, I, I don't, and I, I, it's kind of a, a crazy way to answer this. I didn't think it was going to be hard. Um, I knew it was going to be challenging. Um but um yeah chris just messaged me he said he's got pretty bad connection it's going on right now claro damn it um <laughs> you know i i knew it was going to be challenging you know um i i never lost faith in our vision um our brand uh our products and what we wanted to do i never lost faith in um you know the 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 validity that, that that we brought to not only this show that we do that I've been doing for a while and and you know we started years ago, um, but also what I wanted to do because I've always had the mindset of approaching it from a consumer point of view, and you know I I know by 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 keeping that uh, that vision, um, we were going to get through, you know what we needed to get through right we were going to find um, a factory. Um, it, it was just going to be really the most difficult part was the timing. Like how long is it going to take? Because, you know, cigars and I, I just speak from my very limited experience, you know, and I mean that honestly, it, you know, you can't rush it. You can't rush construction. You can't rush the, the fermentation. It's just things cannot be rushed. And when they're rushed, you're just going to get a crappy product. You're just going to get a crappy rendition of what your vision is. And, and, and I didn't want to be in a position in a situation where I was going to get a sloppy rendition of what our vision was. So I was willing and Jennifer was willing and thank God I have Jennifer. We were willing to take the time that was necessary to find the right factory with a similar vision. that was going to ensure that the product that is released is exactly what the vision is and not just some sloppy representation of what it should have been. All right. You know, and then a, a follow-up question for you with Chris and then the same question for Lars, you know, teaming up with, with uh, Alec Bradley um, uh, care first. Um, um, yes. Have you found a new passion? Like, like you, you found like, okay, so you're, <clears throat> Uh, you're you're with Chris. You're with Veritas, and it's just like you have found this new passion. You know, you're 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 more deeply involved. Maybe before you were in a rut. I don't. I don't. I hate to use that word rut. No, it's fine. And, and then same same with, yeah, and same with Lars. You know, you know, doing this for a long time. Have you found a new passion? You know, reinvigorated your love of learning, love of cigars. So care. Uh, I, I never lost a passion. Yeah. You oh, know, no, no, I'm not saying yeah, you, ever I'm, lost, no, yeah, I, you ever lost it. Like, you're like, Kevin, like, Kevin, like, let me answer your question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah that, you, you said the same thing to Jessica Sunday night. I, I know, so right? Let me answer your question. Jessica, let me answer. I, I see where she gets it from. Um, I'll give her that one because I probably owe her a lot of uh, apologies for that night. Um, <clears throat> There was no reinvigorating of the passion. There was no reamping, and, and, and you're right. I, I, I don't think you ever lose the passion. Um, 
I think it, you know for for me with uh, uh, meeting with Chris, talking to Chris, and and what's funny is um, when you asked originally was you know was I ever in a position where you know we were you know was it difficult or whatever. Um, we were reached out to by a, a couple of factories and we reached out to a couple of factories. So we actually had uh, a lot of communication very early on, which I think it, for me just uh, strengthened, you know, my resolve on moving forward with, with the product. But Strength also I, th I think it, it was a ref reflection of what, um, of, of the of the person I am and 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 the company that we have. So, um, when, when talking to Chris, it was it was refreshing. Um, and uh, I think you know Chris went through the whole um, you know story and dialogue of how we started talking, and we we you know we were like, okay, we're going to connect and talk for five minutes, and it was like an hour and a half later. Um, we're like, okay, let's start talking cigars, you know, because uh, we just really started connecting on a different level. So it was very refreshing when we did start talking about cigars um, that Chris not only gave suggestions and recommendations, but a lot of listening and, um, you know, uh, really responding in a way that it was that uh, collaboration moving forward to, to produce what we wanted to produce. Um, and also... Um, providing that um, valuable insight information that I felt, you know, I'm always open to, to, to that, that, that type of uh, suggestion and dialogue and recommendations. And, and Chris, I think you said it best because it's very true. And it's like this with anything. I may come to you and ask you for advice, Duncan, Lars, Kevin, you know, Daryl, Chris, whatever. And I take your advice and I, and I listen to it and I apply and, and I, I, I take it in but you may, may not apply it or you may not apply 100% of it. Um, and, and I think that was one of the biggest things that when we started talking about the cigars and, and, and the blends really connected me. And then when we did smoke the samples and just how Chris was there every step of the way on top of everything, on every step of the way, there was no question that was unanswered and, and, and he just jumped off right now again. Um, there was no question that was uh, that wasn't un, that was un, un, unanswered, and there was no BS. There was no you know s s sidebar. So, um, I just I I knew that we wanted to have a product that was going to be truly reflective of our vision, and um, it it just um, I think it's it's in, it's in the early stages, obviously, you know, but I think it reestablished trust more so than passion okay now now lars uh, uh, kind of the same question uh, i mean you've been doing this for 40 years um i mean you're 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 well known you had your blends and um it, it seems like um on the announcement of of you partnering up with with alec bradley you know um like the lars teaton brand the lars teaton the person has become more prevalent you know since that time than than it has been in, in I, you know, and, and I don't want to say that I, I don't want to seem like that, that you faded from history, you know, because, because you're, you're Lars Teton, you're, you're a rock star, you've been around forever, but since your partnership, you know, it's, it's just like, it seems like you, you're, you're, you're back in the, um, not that you ever left. I, I, I'm kind of, wow, happy. Kevin, that's, you are backpedaling. I, I, every, I am, I am. Back that's because you've been living under a rock, bro. So, 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 so Lars Teton is, is in the cigar industry from, from what, because I, I see on the day-to-day -day forums, the, the online groups is a rock star. And I don't want to say once again, because I said, you've always been uh, that rock star. Has it been, you know, like new exciting you know like reinvigorated you a little bit you know wanting you know get back out there and and um i don't know what i'm trying to say has, I, think it, has what he, I think what he's trying to say is, lars is you've been in a long time you you you're a rock star do, do you have you ever felt like you were not a rock star um yeah all the time so you you really don't feel any different today than you did 40 years ago when it comes to the industry no, I never really felt like anything. I just, I have no ego in this thing. I'm just doing stuff that I like doing. And, you know, when people are buying it enough, then it becomes something. 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you just, you just, you just recently just latched onto social media. It's one, it's one next step. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Did I interpret that well, Kevin? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely. Uh, I love. I'm very uh, passionate about SLE. I love this girl. Mary is great girl down there. I swear to God, I'm not kidding. Um, I probably spent more time hanging out with her when I wasn't working. She was very cool. Um, very smart person. Um, so, and she rides horses and stuff. She's an equestrian. Really cool. Um, yeah, Duncan, you should have her speaking Spanish back and forth. Come on, man. <laughs> See, Duncan shows the one that he does the whole bilingual show, not this show. We'll, we'll kick yeah. him right off. We start doing that again. All right. <laughs> Too many okay, Anglos so, are on right now. Too so, many Anglos. Do you want me to hit my? Uh, do you want me to hit the rap thing now? Dial it, man. Come on. Hit us with some music, it's man. It's her, her show. I okay. Her. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Right, but it was Kevin's show. First of, Kevin. first of, right. I know well, he did take over for a little bit, but I had to bust Kevin's balls. But I think what's great is we can need to talk about this dialogue and questions and, and, and not beat around a bush, Kev. So I just got to go yeah. for it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a Lars. It's, it's the show. Um, Lars, do your rap, and then I'll go round and you know with everybody's final thoughts because I do want to get to something um, well, that. Go ahead uh, and do that th first. I'm good. Okay, with that. Chris, um, thanks for being on, bud. Really, man, um, are you there? <laughs> I, you you said like that. I'm like, there. he hasn't <laughs> moved in like ten <laughs> seconds. Kara, it's been like such an honor there. to be on the show tonight. You're a great guy, and you're awesome. It's the best um, blends I've ever produced. The best blends I've ever know, produced. Go forward from or, uh, uh, Duncan, <laughs> any final thoughts, man? Uh, hey, man, listen, congratulations. In 20 again. words or left. Congratulations left. yet again. Thanks, Who bro. better, dude? Who better? Who better? You the man. I love you, big brother. I love you too, bro. And I do have some samples for you, so stop oh, busting my chops shut about up. it. Shut up. Yeah. They're, they're Kevin, great. They're, Kevin they're Shahan. Great and I, I've had them my all. Kevin, the, my, my samples ended up in Kevin's hand. They tasted great, right, Kevin? Yes, wow, they, they did. Wow, look at that. Sticks and stones. Yeah. So, so, so yes, that that's what we're promoting right Amandola, now. Amandola, you missed the whole show. Amandola shows up at 930 and goes, oh, man, I missed the show. <laughs> So, so yes, you, that, that, that's that's what we're promoting right now is what Kara's holding up the sticks and stones. So this is something where we've teamed up with United Cigar um, and Two Guys Cigars um, is produced. So this is so uh, if you go to if you go to cigarprop.com you'll find this. Um, but uh, you can go to the Two Guys. Uh, well, you got to go to cigarprop.com to find the link. It's kind of a cool, unique cigar. We're not telling anybody the blend. It's a secret blend at the uh, at the very end of the month. Um, we're asking we're asking everybody to buy a five pack and then don't smoke it. So at the end of the month, we're gonna have everybody open up their five pack and smoke a cigar on air live with us. And we're gonna tell you about a unique cigar that has never been done in the history of cigars before. Um, and this and this is not my blend. I'm not taking credit for it. Uh, it's something that uh, uh, United Cigars have come up with. They wanted to team up with me because. I'm weird and wacky, just like these cigars. So um, it's super cool. It's a five pack. It's fifteen dollars. You know, so it's a three dollar cigar. It's nothing. Absolutely fantastic. It's not mind blowing. It's not mind blowing until you smoke it and I tell you about the cigar. I got to tell you, the the butcher paper on this is really good butcher paper too. It, really it is. Nice. It is. A, a, this is really butcher paper. Yeah, it, it's wax butcher paper. <laughs> it doesn't look like someone went down the. Well. I mean, uh, anyway, that's a it's, it's a real fucking butcher. That's a good yeah. right there. <laughs> that's a butcher so, right there. There's a lot so of meat. That, absolutely fantastic. So uh, uh, there's only 500 five packs available. Uh, I think we've sold about 200 of them. So there's plenty left to go to go around. So it's going to be something cool, innovative. Um, I think once they're gone, they're gone. I don't think they're ever going to be produced again. So it's um, damn. It, it, it it's a unique smoke, and I stress to everybody. It's a $3 cigar. Please keep that in mind when you're purchasing it and when you're smoking it. But I think you're going to be blown away when you find out all the details about the cigar. It's it, very, very tricky. Very, it, very, very sneaky. It's very, sneaky. Very, very tricky. There he is. 
So, so yes, if you go to cigarprop.com, you can find that on my website <laughs> with a link that'll take you to two guys. If you go right to two guys cigars, you're probably not going to find it. It's kind of like one of those hidden links. Um, if you go to the cigar prop YouTube channel, you can find the video. It's about a 15 minute video explaining the, what we're doing, what we're trying to do with the cigar. So definitely check it out and it'll, it'll be, it'll be fun. All right. Thanks, Kev. I was going to say, we got to wrap it up. Chris is here. We don't know we're going to lose him again. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Chris, I want to thank you for being on the show tonight, man. Um, it, it, it's been very good having you. Um, uh, fantastic working with you. And any final thoughts before we ride off into the sunset um, under the uh, the the uh, the sunset of of Lars's rap? I would just say that you know, as it pertains to cigar creation, you know, it, it's ex it's been exciting working with you. It's going to be very exciting working with you, and it will be exciting working with you going forward with some of the projects that you and I have. Yeah. bantered back and forth about and uh stuff that's that's in the works um you know it's just i'm, I'm a small guy i i'm happy being small i don't ever want to be big uh some of the best advice or some of some of the advice i've gotten from other people in the industry longer than me is just don't get big um you like that artesian style you weren't interested in cutting corners nor 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 my, in myself you knew what you wanted and you were able to articulate it. But even if not, like for people that want to start a brand out there, if you if you think you want to get into this, just understand that there is pros and cons to the entire thing. And you had a pretty good concept of pros and cons. You've ex you unfortunately experienced some of those cons where, you know, the biggest thing is being on top of your quality control. Lars knows that. I mean, I've never heard a bad thing about a, a, a cigar that's got out there, but you got to be on top of it. I mean, I'm on top of it down here, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be on top of it yourself, even if you have somebody else producing for you. Um, that's one of the biggest things. Is, you know, your name is on it. Like you said, you don't want to put something out that has your stamp on it, your band, your ring, whatever, your anillo, whatever you want to call it. And Duncan can correct me on that if I if I got the word wrong, but I'm pretty You're sure right. ring on it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know... Don't let it be. Uh, don't let the frustration and pain that can go along this process deter it. I mean, we've all had our bumps in the roads. I, I've had yeah. mine. Um, so you know, it, it's just sticking with it. And you, and you have a solid product. I'm happy to make it. Um, cheers. Cheers. D uh, we got everybody in, Lars. Um, yeah, just go on to my uh, Lars Seas presents uh, uh, group forum thing, whatever that is on the on facebook and go to my youtube that has all my stuff on it and some of these uh shows are on there too the, the people are loving it okay yeah the shows uh, are getting lots of views on your youtube channel. i know they it's really ridiculous. are it's crazy um okay let me do a i'll do a little thing now um should i get my guitar no that's okay, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. that was that was pretty quick it's a uh, fucking no. quick no wasn't uh, it please, jesus please don't <laughs> that's how you just get directly to the point kevin you just don't beat around the bush <laughs> <laughs> okay well you could tell by the way i spit i'm a little harder i'm so hard a flouse with barbed wire Ruler of the street empire. One chance to step and then you retire. Got the educator catching body on fire. One, two holes is fluid like a ladder. Dudes want to step. Gonna catch the pliers. Stupid, wake up. Find yourself in hell fire. I don't give a fuck no more. Banging at your door with the big 45. Come on, money, let's get it on straight walls. Cutting at your dudes, you a gun like a sow. I don't give a fuck no more. Banging at your top with the big fire fire. Come on, money, let's get it on street walls. Cutting at your dudes, you my gun like a sword. Pop that P. Now me, stop by the G. Now me, hook up some brains. Now me, ain't no pain. Now me, you that dude always start to trip. You that dude always pound the first clip. 
you that dudes feel the paper from the paste i flip that cake 10 times for a take a taste i don't give a fuck no ma banging at your job with the big fighter fire come on money let's get it on street walls cutting at your dudes you my gun like a sword yeah i don't give a fuck no ma banging at your job with the big fighter fire come on money let's get it on street walls cutting that you do you my gun like a sword a black ski mask pay black tims i'm a home invader so i rock black rims three in the more wake up to taste of my steel so much blood i had it use a black pair put the blow touching the plies away take out the extra bag to put the loot away if you think you're gonna get my paper on the low i turn your air like a two dollar how i don't give a fuck no ma banging it out with a big body fire Come on, money, let's get it on street walls. Cutting at your dudes, you my gun like a sword. Yeah, I don't give a fuck no ma. Banging at your dog with the big fighter fire. Come on, money, let's get it on street walls. Cutting at your dudes, you my gun like a sword. Yeah, baby. Hey, Mary. Wow, I love you, baby. Love you, Mary. What rap was that, Duncan? Uh, that's just saying, you know, that, that Lars is nice. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> Lars is nice. Oh, my God. I don't know about that one. I don't trust, I don't trust him, Lars. I don't trust him. <laughs> Listen, I want to thank everybody again for being on the show tonight. Uh, gosh. Uh, it was great seeing know. all you guys, man. It that's is, awesome. man. Uh, Lars, thanks for being on the show with uh, the, the shoulder replacement just happening last week. Um, Duncan, you're again you're you're you know you're strung up hung up and uh you know you're you're always finding a way to to keep it going so uh a quick uh, speedy recovery to you uh kevin thank you for uh, for gracing us with your presence this evening i i loved how you started duncan um Duncan, uh, yeah, no idea where he was going. Th thank you for being Duncan. Thank you, and, um, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I it was. Thank you, well, Lars. Uh, Lars was, uh, you know, he had the shoulder replacement. Duncan's, uh, you know, his diagnosis, everything is still kind of up in the air. So I wish him well with that. Um, and I just, you know, thank him for for always toughing through uh, whatever's going on, especially this that two foot fall. Did a lot of damage. <laughs> you could have said six foot fall, or, man, Jesus. You should have lied about that fall, Duncan. I'm just saying. Uh, hearing, hearing it's a two foot tall, uh, two foot fall trying to uh, uh, remove a, uh, what was it? A, Dude, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a damn uh, window drapery or it something. It was a window drapery. That's yeah, like, yeah. listen, you should have fell yeah, off the yeah. roof while you were there's trying there's to. There's no way to man that up. There's just no way to man it up. You, you, you just be listen, there was an eight foot roof. I was doing shingles in the middle of a windstorm. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I stopped a robbery. I did uh, anything else, you know. I it, did not like the Paisley. So I yeah. got up in this two foot <laughs> yeah. and I, I shifted Funny, and then I fell. And I want, I, I wanted, I wanted, I, I, I just wanted plain, not Paisley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. And Chris, again, thanks for you. Thanks for being on brother. Uh, thanks for everything. And Kev, thanks for, uh, gracing us with your presence again with, uh, turning into the cigar prop show, uh, uh 2.0, 2.0. You're welcome. I think, I think, I think my brownies are about done. So, uh, <laughs> um, it's, uh I've, I've got to go. You know, I gotta go get those. Uh. Oh man, that's hilarious. Well, listen, guys. Check on what you got in the oven. Yeah, Check, yeah, he's he's got a bun in the oven. Yeah, check us. Uh, oh, I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, listen, check us out next Thursday again, 7:30 p.m. from Lars, Duncan, uh, Kev, and Chris. This is the Stogie Road Show. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you soon.